Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. I'm ready to go. Perfect. Hey, everyone. Welcome to... (laughs) (laughs) Motherfucker. (laughs) You ruined everything. Well, cancel the podcast. Get it all out, guys. Yawn. Sneeze. Cough. Whatever you need to do. So you said the word yawn, and now I feel like yawning. That's how it works. You you are the instigator here. He says yawn because our, his RTX is on. Yeah. God damn it, Brett. I was about to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. What What if he says, like, fart randomly in the middle of the show? <laughs> <laughs> fart? Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to 4Player Podcast. This is episode 655. My name is Nick Henderson. I am joined this evening by Brad Simons. Present. Sleepy Brad Simons, apparently. Dolan Hedstrom. Hey yo. Christopher Davis. Hello, hello. And Ed Mitchell. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to have you back, Ed. Yeah, I'm glad um, to be back. It's been a we're while. Gonna, we're gonna catch up with you in a little bit. You've got you've been playing some games, lots of games, it seems. Uh, but we have a lot to talk about before we get too far into the show. Uh, I want to real quickly remind everybody that uh, we're pushing forward with the Revival Club now, now that I'm all settled in. Uh, I'm going to finish Bully this week, but I, I put the uh, the poll up today for voting for the next game. It's going to be a quick one. Uh, I know we're really far behind, so we're just going to do a quick one in October. Uh, I, so we're going to do a, like a horror Halloween-themed uh, Revival Club. There are six games to choose from. Should I, should I just rattle them off, I suppose? If, if people are interested in... If people are interested in voting, the options for this Revival Club are Castlevania, double feature, so Rondo of Blood plus Symphony of the Night, The Suffering, one and or two, uh, The Darkness 2, Clive Barker's The Undying, uh, The Evil Within, and Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs. So that poll is up now. If you're a supporter on Patreon at a three dollar tier or higher, or if you're a subscriber on Twitch, you should have access to the supporters or the nominations channel in Discord. There's a link in there you can click to, to vote in the poll. It's also on the Patreon activity feed at patreon.com slash four player. Get your vote in. I'm gonna let that r- run through the end of the weekend, and then we'll have our game. Uh, and I'm gonna be recording a podcast for Bully probably within the next week, maybe two weeks. Uh, I just gotta finish it up. I'm getting pretty close. Um, and that's really all I, all I had to report right now. So before we get into the games and the news, because there's some big news this week to discuss. Some I thought big... we just get right into the games, Nick. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I, Ed, how are you doing? We haven't uh, we haven't good. talked to Ed in a little bit. I'm good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been. Uh, it's been a. I think the last time I was on the podcast was April, so it's been uh, quite some time. I traveled a lot during the summer, despite. Uh, COVID went home to visit parents and uh-huh. uh, did some national park trips and stuff like that. So good outdoors I, things. That's, yeah, that's exactly. perfect for a pandemic. Yeah, and then uh, and then in August, right during a two thousand uh, two thousand month or whatever, uh, my computer decided to completely shit the bed. So oh, did you build I, a new co- new computer? Yes, I did build a new computer. I can uh, show it on the stream in, in a second once I'm not talking. But um, yeah, so we my my hard drive basically ended up dying. And so the page file was like mm. having trouble reading the page file. So I kept getting memory blue screens. No. And so it, it took me a while to figure out what the actual problem was. But uh, basically, I just decided I wanted to build a new computer anyway, like back in March. And so I was like, all right, well, if you're going to make me, I guess I will. Yeah. There you um, go. Did you have a good backup or did you lose a lot of shit? No, I didn't lose anything. So my drive like was dying, but didn't die. So I was able to pull everything off of it. Um, before. There's nothing worse than the sound of a like a dying hard drive that's like yeah. trying to. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. It was like I pulled up my the like discrete error report or whatever, and in the past, uh, in all of the time that I've had my computer, I had 1,300 discrete errors. 
and a thousand of them were in the last month. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it's about time for a new computer. Yeah. Then. So yeah. yeah, and then uh, and then in the past couple of uh, weeks and months, I've been uh, looking for a new job. So uh, now cool. all that's settled, and I'll be looking forward to a nice uh, empty October. Wonderful. Of no well, no full time job. So. Did you get? Did you? I don't know if even if you were in the market for one, but did you have? Did you get a pre-order for a PS5 or an Xbox? I did or not. You just, I didn't even really try to be honest. <laughs> I figured that first wave was going to be a complete shit show. So oh, it was. I kind of just wanted to wait and see. Well, so maybe uh, I'll try wave, again tomorrow. A wait, yeah, wave two of uh, PS5 pre-orders are going out to a bunch of retailers tomorrow. Yeah, it seems like a lot more. Uh, obviously, a lot more notice for that second wave, and you know they seem committed to making it smoother, but. Who knows? Tomorrow could still yeah. be chaos, <laughs> or the fucking like, like there was plenty of notice too on like the the Nvidia graphics cards, mm-hmm. but you know that so, was also a shit show. Just make sure when you're when you go to pre-order one, Ed, that you don't accidentally pre-order a PS4 by mistake. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh yeah, no, totally. Like I was, I typed in, I've definitely typed in <laughs> PS5 into Amazon a couple times, and the first result is a PS4 every time. Dude, so. Uh, you know, Nolan's making reference also to the Xbox. A lot of people, the sales of the oh, yeah. Xbox One X went up by like 750% because <laughs> people were probably accidentally buying those. So yep. like Robin texted me in the morning. and was like, I got, I got my Xbox. And I was like, cool. And then like Nolan said that later in the day. And I was like, oh shit. I feel like I need to go ask her and make sure she got the right thing. But she did. She okay. got the right thing. She got it from Microsoft too. I'm super like jelly direct- about it. Yeah, nice. I'm super jelly about that. I got my PS5 from Target, and I'm really nervous about Is it. Is she getting a, an S she'll or an X? No, She's I'm getting an X. I'm going to be more nervous about like GameStop. Uh, yeah. Like, Target, such a shaky institution. Yeah. No, you can it, mail out things? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more of it's like I keep waiting for that moment when I get the email saying, sorry, we got we, we didn't have the right, you, you know. Canceled your order or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like. I'm just bracing myself for it. I don't think it's going to happen, probably, but you know, you never know. But yeah, uh, Chris Davis, Robin is getting a Series S. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's it's probably going, call. Like, I'm thinking, like, going all digital. Get the big PS PS5 because I still like having like actual games. Yeah. Um, like discs or whatever, and then get the digital Xbox when it gets like fifty dollars off or something like that with yeah. a game bundle or something like that. Yeah, I, f- I figured. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eventually, I'm eventually going to invest in a new graphics card when Nvidia will let us. Uh, so I figured I would just ride that wave, and then I'll wait until there's like a sale down the road for the Xbox, or until there's at least a few games that I can only play on that. There's, there's probably not going to be many at all that are playable why, only on the Xbox. Why, why would you also want to get an Xbox? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, it's definitely like dependent on if Microsoft does any like. Uh, weird releases like Halo or whatever, but, but like if, all those if, exclusives are PC. I don't as think well. they yeah. will. I think they're, they're gonna not going to do that anymore. That I don't really see a, a need for. Yeah, it. they're all I mean, yeah. PC and Game Pass. So. That's why I, I mean, said I was going to wait like for probably a year before I even think about it. You know. See, I'm just going to wait until down the road when I can get one for cheap and I can just buy all the games that I loved physically for cheap, right. because that that side of me will eventually come out and demand that I own them physically. <laughs> I, I can I can tell you that now, but for now I'm just gonna ride the the PC wave. Um, so, anyways, we got a lot. We're gonna catch up more with you, Ed, when you we get towards the end of the segment. We're gonna we, you have a lot of stuff, a lot of games that you've been playing. We'll, we'll play catch up on, but we're also gonna talk about Super Mario 3D All Stars, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two Remake, and uh, Hades, which Ed and Brad have both been been playing. So, yeah, there's um, a reason I'm tired because you've been playing too much Hades. Do you want to start with Hades? I streamed till like. 2.30 last night. We're Damn, talking about bro. Hades, not Hey D. Yeah, right, right. The okay. new super we're talking, giant. We're talking about Hey D's nuts. The new <laughs> super giant ass. I mean, <laughs> super giant game. Yeah, well, let's talk. Why don't we start with Hades? Yeah. That, that's your cue. One of y'all can take it. Oh, take Hades. It hey, me and Ed have been playing Hades. Have you been playing a lot of Hades? I, I basically like started it last night and I played like from when I started until I went to bed, so like three hours straight. I don't think anyone has ever played just a little bit of Hades because if you've started Hades, yeah. you've played a lot of Hades. <laughs> Wait, did you say you started at 1 a.m. and then you played until you went to bed, so like three or four hours later? No, I started at like 10, and then I played oh, okay. one. I thought yeah. I heard one for a second. I was like, that's that's yeah. not good. It's a, it's a school night, Ed. <laughs> Hades is the new 
rogue light from uh oh what from it, it's his video oh, that's fine oh 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 is the new rogue light from super giant games makers of bastion transistor and pyre mm-hmm. this is a sort of an isometric action game um you know like a lot of rogue likes rogue lights are i, I sp- specifically say rogue light because there is like like say rogue legacy some permanent yeah. pr- progression to your character strength as you play the game so you are gradually getting stronger from run to run to run but it is a run based game and you're going to die a lot this one was yeah. this was the one that was in early access right and it just came right. out of early yeah it's yep. okay. been early access for i i, I think it came out the year, day right? that the epic game store launched right oh yeah yeah um and it's been quite successful in early access and it's selling even uh, better now that it's out it seems like it's probably already their most successful game um and man it's a good one it's yeah. uh, it's a good one and e- even even if you're a little afraid of of the fact that it's a roguelite uh don't be because because this is a game where you're constantly getting like very satisfying and rewarding progression even if you're dying but one of the most unique aspects of Hades is that you're also progressing a story from run to run to run. Um, this is set my attention. This is set in like, you know, Greek mythology, right. And you're interacting with, you know, all the gods, you're you're the son of Hades. You're You're the son of Hades. who's like trying to rebel by like escaping. Exactly. Tartarus or whatever. Ah, and at the start of the game, you don't even really know why, but yeah. through like flashbacks and as the story builds from run to run to run, you, you sort of figure out why you, you develop relationships with all the gods and stuff. And those relationships will also develop. Um, there's like flashbacks and stuff. And it's just a yeah. really I've never seen a roguelike where I really cared about the story. And and you think because this is a roguelike that maybe the story wouldn't be as good as some of uh, Supergiant's other games, but it's all here. Like the quality writing, the quality voice acting, like amazing mm-hmm. music, like pre- presentation is through the roof on this thing. The, the narrate, there is a narrator and he is like somewhat omniscient or whatever. And, but the main character and actually talks back to the narrator. Oh. Yeah. So he like says like, Oh, I, I, the first time he says it, he's like, I can hear you. And then he starts <laughs> to, every time you do like a little, uh, lore piece or whatever, uh, then hit the, the main character will like talk back to him, which is kind of a neat little interaction. That's um, cool. I mean, they've already had, they've always had like really interesting ways of telling stories. I don't know what yeah. it is about. Like I played and finished Bastion, but every game since Bastion, unless I'm forgetting one, I've like started and gotten like halfway through and then it's kind of lost me. So Nick, like, what did you like about Bastion particularly? I mean, a lot of it was presentation to be, I mean, right. to be honest, mechanically speaking, I don't remember a lot of okay. Bastion. Well, it's well, it's unfortunate you don't remember because I feel like in a lot of ways, even though this is a rogue, like this feels like a a a little bit of like a spiritual successor. Yeah, to I agree, hundred percent. I mean, like just the build. You're like at the start. I'm playing the shield right now, but mm-hmm. you have like uh, you start with a sword and you get like a, there's a bow, a shield, and something else I haven't unlocked yet. But um, you have different weapons you can choose from like at the start of your run, and they all have like very unique like play styles to them. Um, I like yeah. the shield because of the little special move which is like a charge um mm-hmm. and then actually in this run we'll get to it we we can talk about it in a second but like some of the power-ups like make your your different abilities way more powerful yeah so uh, so the power-ups are kind of like one of the big hooks of this game where um this is you know a uh uh you know you're it's it's you're running around beating up things and you're kind of clearing rooms and and every time you go through a door into into the other room there's like a reward once you clear that room and oftentimes there's the there are these boons which are upgrades and the boons are are aligned to each of the different like olympian gods right there's like a right. zeus boon there's a you know a poseidon boon or whatever yeah, it's got the daedalus and, hammer right here the daedalus hammer um so in and, and, and once you click on one of these boons, you, you kind of choose between like three different upgrades and, and, and these upgrades are like really um, well thought out and really like significant. This isn't like a Borderlands thing where you're getting like three percent boosts to right. like different things like imperceptible upgrades. No, these are like distinct perceptible upgrades. I was thinking a lot about like Diablo three when I was playing this game. Because if you've ever played Diablo three, you're getting all these skills, but then you unlock runes, which are like modifiers to, to right. that really change up what those skills do in significant ways. And, and to the point where you can like sort of mix and match them and create like a, a very distinct build based on all these different yeah. modifiers. That's kind of like, like it's very similar to that. 
That's so a good comparison time... because you get like you have four base abilities. You like cast a special and attack and a dot and a dash, right? And then each of the different modifiers you get can affect that different thing. So I just got the Daedalus Hammer, and one of my choices was my special. If I wait till it flashes and then I release right when it flashes, it'll do 500% more damage than it normally does. Ooh. So, like, now, that now, seems you, just noticeable. See, now you just see <laughs> yeah. me, like, running around just using the special over and over again on enemies. As I'm, and the special is that thing where it shows the, the arrow there that, uh, that charges, yeah. right? And oh, so the one I'm that you're using, using over, over and over, over again? again? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> The one that you can't <laughs> stop using. Um, right. Hey, it's the God of War. Uh, yep. <laughs> so one thing I'm noticing just right right out of the gate, because this is obviously a super giant game. This is much more fast paced than anything uh, they've ever done. Unless I'm forget. I mean, well, again, it's a little bit of a spiritual successor to, to Bastion, but even Bastion wasn't this snappy. This is probably their best feeling, most responsive game. Like the combat system is really well done and you could tell they put a lot of thought into the little details to like make it work work well and make it feel really good and and as soon yeah, as you start playing bastion, this game it's just a fucking joy and bastion you're like dot your dodge was a roll right so it was yeah. a little bit more like like meaning or like like forceful in the role and a little bit slower and this time yeah. it's a dash you're just like quickly going and moving around the map mm -hmm. uh, there's yes. lots of traps on the ground too so you can like walk into a trap to trigger it and then dash out and then an enemy can get hit by the trap yeah, um, you're and then constantly the, on the move all, all the pillars like around here maybe not in this uh this map but like if you hit a pillar with your with your sword or whatever it'll drop uh like stuff from the ceiling and eventually, if you collapse it, if the enemy's near it, a bunch of stuff will drop them from the ceiling and then do a lot of damage to them. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, just a cool, like, combat mechanic for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's one that if you just really want to get into, like, some really, a really tough rogue, like, like it's rewarding just on that level. It's just a really, really good action game. But, but again, don't be afraid of something like this. If you're just sort of interested in, like, because you like the vibe of uh, super giant games you like their soundtracks you yeah, like you know the quality of like the voice acting and the writing all that's here and honestly it's so good that even if you don't typically play a game like this i would still recommend it because it is I this mean, an underdog for 2020 because man it's not, even an like underdog, uh, not anymore like it, it is i mean they just announced they sold a million copies yeah uh, what Nice. Seven hundred thousand of those were in early access. Yeah, Jesus, so they're, they're doing quite well. And actually, I I got it the ability to defy death there, so I almost died, and then it restored half my health, and I was able to keep going. So, are there? Is, you know, I, I I hate to be the one that always sounds shallow here. Are there like traditional like cutscenes, or is this kind of how all the story is presented to you, where you have like the character uh, art and the text? You're text not box. shallow. You're it, just dumb. It's also it's also voice <laughs> acted though. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, it, it's incredible voice acting and music. Don't worry about the fact that it doesn't look like I don't know. No, like, I think the game like looks game. fantastic. I was just more of asking about how like their the means in which they tell the story. I wasn't sure if it was all just really based. quality. Is, is this acting. game how how linear is this? Uh, it's a rogue like, and there's but the region order is always the same. Yeah. So you know, from room to room, that they're always going to mix that up. And uh, but the bosses at the end of each region are the same. But that's the thing. They always have something new to say. And then they yeah. start. There's really clever ways in which they mix this up. This feels like a game that was in like a really um, um, uh, productive early access game for a couple of years because there's like systems on top of systems and there's always something new to see. And, and again, sometimes you just want to you just want to get to the next run because you kind of want to see like where the story is going. Yeah, and there is a little bit of strategy to like your, you do get a little bit of choice in your progression too, because you yeah. choose basically like what the final item that drops when you kill all the monsters are. See, yeah, I have two yeah, choices. Doors, yeah. There. yeah. So you pick the door you want to go to and, and you, you don't know what the symbols are when you first start, but you very quickly under, uh, figure that out and understand what they are. Yeah, so, um, so so you might come across two doors. It's often like two doors, some sometimes three, uh, or I guess usually two doors. Um, and one might be like an upgrade that increases your maximum health, and one might be a boon from a god. You can, you can hold, you know, multiple ones. One could be, you know, like a shop, and one could be... You know something else, right? Yeah, and like max, if you increase your maximum health, it also heals you. So you get you get the trade off of more power versus a healing. Uh, yeah, but right? but but 
then there's one door that gives you like the currency it's called darkness that lets you like permanently upgrade your character but you you might get a modifier because you have like the again permanent progression that makes it so uh every time you get some darkness which is that experience you also heal a little bit right Right. so you can you can invest in your character development in that direction and now all of a sudden you know you might be favoring uh uh that that Re, uh, room reward more often because you're sort of building in that direction you know yeah. what i mean and just just real quick it, brad mentioned the the fact that they always have like something new to say it, i'm about to get to the to the boss of this first area and she says she basically says like oh you're at like half health like why are you even bothering to come fight me i'm just gonna kill you like huh. immediately you know so, so is there like i'm assuming there's also like lore explanation as to why you know you're repeatedly fighting the same yeah bosses yeah. and shit well you're yeah you're, I mean, you're trying to escape hell yeah, yeah. And, and and anyone that basically dies in hell just gets yeah back oh, into hell right? makes sense but it's not always how, the same boss. Long, i don't want to spoil it but yeah how long is each run well so i've gotten to the final I know, i'm sure it depends on how far you get and stuff like that but on average how long do you think it would take to start a game and get to like yeah yeah halfway to the to the final boss like whatever I'd say about thirty to forty-five minutes. Uh, I I uh, I got to Hades a few times. The, 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 one of the interesting things about the final area is that it's almost entirely optional. Not entirely. You have to search for a specific item to like get past that area. But the end of the area is like right there as soon as you get there. Right. All you have to do is find that item, and there's like six different paths you can go to try to find that item. But even once you find that item, you could clear out all of those paths to get stronger, to get more money so you can buy stuff from the final shop or whatever. But if you're like just trying to get through the game really quickly, you can bypass like, you know, 75% of that final area if you're lucky in finding that item. And it, it it's, it's kind of a big departure from, from like the way the other areas are structured to the point where you could tell that they're thinking, okay, well, maybe if people are a little tired of this run going too long, they could just kind of get right to it and fight the final boss, which I think is, is pretty a pretty cool cool way to structure things um i was actually surprised when i got to the final boss i thought the game was going to be a little bit longer but i'm glad that it isn't because i heard even once you beat that final boss there's again more systems upon systems that unlock the uh kind of like a you know like when you beat slay the spire all of a sudden you start climbing like ascension levels and stuff uh mm-hmm. to make the game harder in unique ways and there, there's stuff there's a system like that in this game as well and so again uh, so like i I've honestly never really played a roguelite or a roguelike, mm. so it's a good one to start with. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, it's definitely on my radar now. I'm just so how do you? I'm trying to figure out how to ask this without sounding dumb. So how do you tell a story when you when an entire run a full run of the game lasts thirty to forty five minutes? Yeah, I mean, because the story die, progresses with each run. So every time you die, you get the ability to talk. So basically, like when you die, you can you go back to the beginning and you ha- you're in like a starting area or starting room where there's a bunch of NPCs that you can talk to, mm-hmm. and you can only talk to them once, and get like a little, a little tidbit or a little uh, lore thing or whatever, and then you have to go. And then if you die again, then you can talk to them again. So yeah. like every oh. time you die, you like progress the story by like talking to those people yeah, exactly like 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 achilles is hanging out in the house of hades or your house or whatever right and you might talk to him but then uh you might go on a run and come back and die and he's gone and you might not find out why he's gone until like the subsequent run where you right. die and you come back and like gotcha. so and when you say you when you go like other characters will be having a conversation and you can kind of listen to what they're saying it's just yeah. a really rich so when you uh, say you got to the final boss, I'm assuming that you got to the final boss and died because you're not strong enough to beat the final boss. Yes, yes. Okay, so you well, just do it over and over and over again until you're strong enough to actually win, or until I'm I get good. Basically, yeah. until you get, okay. Got I mean, yeah. there's that. There's also like if you want to like go for the final boss, then you could pick more power ups or whatever to kind of mm-hmm. buff yourself up so that you have more ability to to, yeah. to do more damage. Right. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. I've just like. I, Prince of the Prince of the Universe is over here being a smartass. I don't know. Like, I've never played a game like this, so it's all kind of foreign to me. Did you Dude, just trying to get FTL, right? yeah, I mean, So, so I've never played FTL. So, yeah. So I played like three hours last night, right? And I got oh, to wait. this boss once, and then I'm. This is the second time I've I've fought her. Right? Gotcha. Oh. So I, I have not gotten good yet. I I would, I would say. Um, the- also, this is when I joined the battle with like half health, and she made fun of me, and then. Yeah, you suck, Ed. 
Sorry. The, <laughs> the um. Wait, didn't you play Into the Breach? Uh, f- I, not for very oh, long. Oh, yeah, you were bad at that too. Uh, well, here, here's the thing. How here's the dare thing. you? I think this How is the per. How dare I think you? This game is really good. It's really addictive. It has all the quality, like super giant stuff, but you don't have to learn how to play some like obscure NBA Jam esque mini game or something. Well, that was higher. pretty cool, though, right? Like that's this is this is their good. most accessible game, I think. Even though it's a roguelite, except maybe Bastion, I don't know. But like, it just feels good to play. It's easy to play. You'll immediately understand, like, oh, like I really want to get the next weapon because I, I have access to these three weapons, and they're so fucking different and cool, like. And, and even the modifiers can dramatically change how a weapon feels and plays. It's just, there's always something to unlock. There's always some carrot, right? You Dying isn't like depressing in this game because there's always some new shit back at, back at your home base, right. uh, whether it be a story tidbit or some unlockable shit, or, or I'm now like powering up my weapons in like really unique ways. It's just fucking good. Well, that's cool. This you, is, get, you get like the ability to like give, different people gifts yeah. and then they'll give you like uh trinkets or whatever they allow you to do like certain power-ups or certain trade-off things or whatever so i mean it's a that's just one of like the systems that you can kind of uh d- use hmm. yeah. sweet so, yeah, lots well, yeah. Of fun. you know i would say this game is i i hadn't even given this game the, the time of day and oh uh, it's this, time I, this, I've been, yeah. yeah this looks rad I've been waiting for this to come out of early access for for I guess probably a year and a half now, yep. and man, it, it, it was worth the wait. I mean, that's I, the be- that's the beauty of waiting until something gets out of early access, especially when it's something good. Like last time I did that was for fucking Subnautica, and that was yeah. totally worth the wait. So I caught Katie uh, kind of jamming to some of the music. Uh, last <laughs> I, night. I, I don't. That doesn't surprise me I, at all. I, the I soundtrack was really known for this good music, and she's like, "Yeah, good yeah. music." Darren Corp, dude, you have to play with this with headphones too so oh yeah yeah i mean awesome. i was playing with it on the tv last night and having it nice and blown up is just i i've been playing it on the switch but uh i'm kind of sad i never finished uh pyre because that game was really unique too, actually. yeah um, i mean th- this isn't quite as like uh i think pyre is was definitely like their most a little like, obtuse yeah but also so like interesting like, in a lot of ways like like ambitious th- this is yeah. This is sort of the safer option, but like I feel like I'm still surprised how well it, it really came out. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've I've certainly never felt like I've never seen a super giant make a game that looks quite like this. I mean, well, looks literally yeah. I mean, quite like this because that's the, very, there are styles the same. <laughs> yeah, this is All very right. Bastion. Yeah, uh, like in, this, in more this ways. Kind of makes, hearing y'all say that it like makes, makes compar- comparisons to bastion makes me realize just how little i remember about bastion because <laughs> this is not screaming bastion to me at all but well, i think i'm, re- I'm, I'm just saying, like, if you're drawing lines of comparison with like the combat system it's definitely yeah. way more bastion because transistor and pyre were just completely different types of games i mean pyre yeah. had a little bit of action gameplay to it but it was a lot more about the strategy of like how you set right. up your transistors i guess that's what they're called transistor yeah that was like a tactical game that yeah. game is strange and I, I i i tried replaying it recently on on switch and it's just so like i never really know where i stand in that game <laughs> uh so that's probably why i ended up putting it down but you know this looks red i kind of want to give this a shot um yeah, cool all right you can so throw your shield like captain america there yeah. You go. All right. You you That's had I mean. me. You had me a Captain America. Too. Oh yeah, that was a great power up that I had. Where every time I threw my shield, it would do a damage over time on the enemies. So I'd just throw it, and then I would use my charge, and then once the damage over time would go away, I throw it again. Hmm. And just out of curiosity, Brad, which what weapon type are you using? I mean, Ed's oh, I, I use I use all of them because they actually like randomly at the end of a run when you go back to your house, they'll give you like a percentage bonus of like experience if you use a specific one at the time. So mm-hmm. I usually just kind of go with whatever one has that boost. So I've been using all of them and they're all so fun. They're all yeah. so cool. yeah. And, and then, like, depending on what boons you get, like they can play completely different. It's dude, just get it. Everybody, you too, Nolan. I know you're like, a, oh, I'm playing Mario <laughs> Brothers, but dude, Look, just get Hades. You'll love it. I'm All sure right. You're the you're more roguelike uh, fandom. You're you're more of a roguelike fan than anyone here. So you should definitely try it. And if you uh, the more you use weapons, the more war you unlock for the weapons and stuff like that. If you're into oh, yeah. reading and stuff like that, so there's a, it all kind of cool. feeds back into it. Well, maybe I will add this to my 
huge pile of games that I want to play this year. Um, all right, on the Switch, uh, on the Switch Nick. But it'll be it'll be after you finish Red Dead Two, though. Are you playing it on Switch? I am, but I'm playing it mostly on TV mode because. But I mean, how little, does it? How do you like it on little, Switch? Does it run? Fine? I feel like you need a good controller. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, no, I, no, no, no! It runs great on Switch because they they um they prioritize like frame rate and smoothness and everything like over anything else. So the resolution is kind of like it's a little blurry, especially if you've seen it on PC. But um, it runs, you know, perfect. I mean, I, I have my Pro Switch. controller. Yeah, so that's what oh, I've yeah. been doing using my I mean, Pro controller uh, in handheld. I mean, mode. I you could do it to kind of like get by, but. Honestly, with the between the controls and the fact that everything's like really kind of small, uh, probably stick to a TV. But... Starting to go go bad too, so that doesn't help either. Yeah. Well, so I was gonna subtly trans transition to Mario because you mentioned Mario a minute ago, but it, the time yeah, the, subtle so the time for, the time for that transition has passed. So I, let's just talk. I just want to talk about Mar- <laughs> talk about Mario now. Uh, me, Nolan, Ed, we've I think just the three of us have been playing. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. However, Nolan and I have been focusing on Super Mario Sunshine. Great and, game. Uh, no, <laughs> so, Great's a Nolan, strong word. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. I, I, I just, I I just like know... I playing this collection has been playing Sunshine. Well, the thing is, because I feel like Sunshine's kind of like the elusive one, right? The one that like nobody ever finished, or like the one that was... <laughs> That's what I was going to say, is I've beaten Super Mario 64 three or four times... Uh, I've beaten Odyssey, or sorry, not Odyssey, Galaxy, maybe one, maybe twice, at least once. Uh, Sunshine is the only one out of the three I've literally never finished. Yeah, this uh, is the only 3D, like traditional, like 3D Mario I, I've never, I've never finished. I got really far back in the day on the GameCube, but I never finished it. And I, the only reason I was hesitating a minute ago because I didn't know what to say was because I know I was Nolan was, he was having an issue with the camera earlier, and I know I think you f- figured that out, like you couldn't look up or something, right? And I, I, and I know I figured you, out that particular issue because you, you seemed very angry <laughs> and I'm just wondering if that's still kind of where you stand or if you're having a better time with it now. Um, you get used to it, but uh, so I have maybe I've, that's a hard question to answer. I, well, it, it's a hard question to answer in so few words. Right. Um, I, have, I have many opinions about this game. Um, I will stand by what I had brought up in Discord a while back, and for those who aren't in our Discord or maybe missed that conversation... They should be, though. uh, One of my big problems with this game is it seems like what they did was they were like, hey, Mario 64 was great. We love that game. But we want the Flood to be the main thing of this. So they they sat down, and they wrote code for how you're going to interact with this jetpack, this thing, how you're going to traverse the world with it and all this stuff. And then they were like, guys, you know, this game, we got to ship it in like two weeks. And they're like, oh, we don't even Mario can't even move around. All we spent time on was the flood. Uh, should we should we make Mario have tight controls? And they're like, ah, now, nah, fuck it. And then they <laughs> the game. Because um, I honestly feel like this game controls worse than Mario 64. Yeah, it does. As Mario. It does. It, no, it does. So that, that, that really shines <laughs> shines. Uh, when you were on the levels where uh, whatever his name is, fucking watercolor Mario, uh, Shadow whatever, Mario, yeah, Bowser Jr. in disguise. Spoilers. Um, when he steals your flood, um, and you have to traverse a level without your 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 flood pack, it really then shows like how not tight like you're gonna see in this footage. Uh, Mario controls. Right. So one one of my big frustrations is because they introduced um, the flood where they're like, well, now if you want to get from every time you say that, I think of halo. <laughs> um, I have no idea what you're talking about. Cause I don't, the flood is bad there. I don't know what that means. Um, so anytime you're in the kind of these levels, you can't do the things Mario used to be able to do. Like there's no long jump. It just doesn't exist in this game. There's no, I, yeah, I was trying to do that today they, and I was like, what the they fuck took out a bunch of shit but you, you're trying to do that instinctively because Mario 64 has it and Mario uh, Galaxy has it. Mario Galaxy 2 has it. Mario Odyssey have it. You know, all the fucking good games have these really good controls. And then this game all of a sudden doesn't have them. And I think their thought is like, well, you want to use the, the the flood, use the flood to get around. Don't like and I think it's honestly but there's a lot of episodes, a lot of uh, levels where you don't have the flood. I don't even think that's the scenario. I think 
the the problem is i think maybe that at some point they did have those functionality in there but maybe people were using them too much and not using the flood enough and they're like oh well then mm. just take it out so they have to like there yeah. are so many jumps in this game <laughs> i could make i tried to time it and i definitely did not that was it. fucking nope. hilarious nope. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like i thought, I thought he was thinking, daring i thought he was thinking like maybe they're just invisible <laughs> No, I, I knew I was. I knew they were about to reappear, and so I was like, "All right, if I go now, it should be." And I went a little too early. That was um, beautiful. He was cone for the gold. Now, not the now, I will tell you the absolute worst thing about this video game. It's that uh-huh. every time you die or fuck up, yeah. the game always mocks you. It does. It, it has this like yeah. annoying yeah. fucking I, like. I, too like, bad. I, I don't. You, I don't the, it, you're worried about them like making fun of you. That's what makes the game bad for you. It's just, no, it's just Did like you, that level of negative, bad. constant negative reinforcement. Well, no, he, okay, so he, he started. The worst part say, is when you lose all your lives, you got to go to the center of Delfino Plaza. Yeah. Well, that's a, yeah. Yeah, like I thought, like, what, like, why does it take you to the center of Delfino Plaza instead of just right outside of the level you were currently oh in? It's, it's really weird. Okay. Some but, of the levels, like the one on the island that you have to take a boat to get to, okay, or a Yoshi. Oh, God. I know. Okay, so. We're, we're, there are some good things about this game. Sure, of course. Uh, like, I, like, so I'm, I, I haven't. I'm I not feel like he has with... less air control. There is definitely yeah. less air control, yeah. and it's there's a real problem breaking. with perspective. So, so okay. So, yeah, so now, if perspective you look, problem for sure. Look at where the camera is on Mario, and the problem is the way that this camera works in this game. If you pull it down, the camera zooms in, and if you pull it up, right. it zooms out. But it zooms way too fucking far out. Like, it has no business being that far away from Mario. Like, I do not need to see a thousand yards away from Mario when I'm trying to make a jump that's 10 feet in front of me. I would like it to be closer, please. But you can't control that. It's just if you if you tilt the the analog stick a little too far, it's going to zoom out. But I can't like, oh, let me zoom back in a little bit because I'm trying to make a tight jump or something like that. And that fucks me up. Mario seems to be a little like. I don't say slippery, but there are often times when I like make a jump and all of a sudden he like kind of slides a little bit. Like it just mm-hmm. I don't feel like the precision is like on a pro controller, Nolan. Just yes, curious. I'm pro controller. Okay. I've yeah, been playing. I've mo- played a little bit on pro controller and handheld mode. Yeah, I'm honestly like curious if the controls for on like on the Switch did not like map up very well in in comparison because like all these problems that you guys are talking about. Like I play, I played and finished this game, like completely, 100. percent Like three times, maybe. This is like the and dark soul of fucking Mario game. Remember. What is wrong with you, Ed? I don't remember having these troubles. Okay, like I well, remember yeah, but... dying a lot, but it wasn't like because you got fucking bad. used to it. I well, guess. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing, because I I feel like it depends on how you, you know, I I feel like this is kind of the, you know, the ugly duckling of the of the Mario games, just because. It is it is challenging. Like I like I've been playing for like five. I've only been playing like five hours so far, right? I only have nine shines. I think it's challenging for <laughs> reasons, though. Like I don't think it's challenging because it is a well designed game that is difficult. I think it is challenging because a not controls enough are working against you. you. Maybe not enough thought went into like how things work. Like I, I don't know. Like if, if, if I can like in this section. Um, even today, when I was capturing this footage, I thought of half a dozen things that are infuriating me. That like just the, why it was designed this way. Right. So you're gonna see some stuff in this footage that that kind of gets to that. One one of the things is is when you're in the water, you press B to jump out of the water. But if you have any kind of like movement to Mario, he won't jump. He just doesn't yeah. jump. Yeah, I, I remember like, that. For sure. hey, what's the huge deal about that? Well, if you're trying to do a wall jump out of the water, like you'll see me doing in this footage to try and get to that blue coin, it's almost fucking impossible. I, I It takes me a, a good like 10 to 15 tries to yeah. position Mario in a place. I, I can't not move him because you have to be moving because if you jump like parallel to a wall, you can't do a wall jump. You have to jump into a wall. But the problem is if I'm moving, he won't jump. So I have to like get him in an exact position, jump, and then move slightly. Like it's extremely inferior. Like why? I don't understand. I mean, so I will say this: like I, you know, I'm watching this footage of what they're. One thing that I keep so thinking when I'm playing this guy, even in like blue coin, I am constantly mashing jump. Yeah, constantly, and he's not jumping. Like so, right now, I am constantly mashing jump. 
that's annoying. So, but like one thing I'm just, just in general, and I, I never felt this way playing Mario 64, or not, maybe not never, but rarely felt this way playing Mario 64 or even Galaxy, where it's like the shit that they're asking you to do is kind of bananas. Like, like watch, like watching you try to balance on this swinging ship and like yeah. jump and hover and like try and stay on this thing without falling in the water below I feel like that, like none of that ever happened in any of these other Mario games. Well, and, and I'm not even saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's a, no, it's it's what it, makes this game kind of distinct. Well, so here's the thing. This is like a really hard game, right? But there's other hard games in the series. But when when you're right. playing like Galaxy or like or like 3D Land or 3D World, when you get to like the post game, there's some like shit that's like yeah. insanely difficult. But the thing is that those games always control well, and that. And, and there's something about this game that I think is very specific to this 3D Mario game that I don't think is really an issue in, in, in any of the other ones um, is that I feel like you're falling off the shit and having to climb back up it again so, over and over and over so, again. So and, and, and one of the reasons I think that is, Brad, and it's a fear, it's a frustration. I brought it up with Bernadette the other day when I was talking about this game. I've, I've, cause I've, it's, I haven't, I've not just recently played this. I've also been playing Odyssey, uh, sorry, Odyssey, Galaxy and Galaxy 2. Before, before this came out, I busted out, um, uh, Galaxy 2 because I was excited for you know this this remake and, and I you knew it wasn't like going to be on the collection exactly so so anyway like I've been playing that and that game controls very tight and one of the things I've noticed in this that is not in those other games when when Mario is running up to a ledge and you get there you can jump even when you're kind of like a little bit farther out like right. it's a little forgiving that's like hey you know you were just, is this if you were like half an inch left on your foot you just go straight fucking down doesn't matter if you tried to jump at all like you you were donezo like i i feel like it's super unforgiving when it comes to that and like you said this game is very vertical so there are often times when you're having to make a jump and you can't fucking do it like you you're just running and like fall off and you see me do it in this footage a couple of times like it, it's just it's one of those things where it's maddening so hold on another thing nick in this footage no you're, what are you're you doing in this footage you're going you're connecting to facebook or something uh, <laughs> oh god nolan uh, do we need to cut this uh nolan what's up nolan <laughs> i think he's saying nolan I, he's, what's having, up? he's having a little bit of fun <laughs> i played um, a lot of hard mario games i've never played one this frustrating <laughs> This Dude, is the most was... frustrating Mario game. So, so in this level, it, it, this kind of encapsulates all of my frustrations. So, you 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 have to climb on those grates. So you can either climb under them or climb against them on the wall. Okay, but here's the thing. So you come up to a panel, right? And you can interact with that panel and flip the side. Correct? You just right. walk up yeah. to it, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So if you are crawling under it, you press Y to flip it. Right. But if you are crawling on a wall and you press Y, Mario jumps off. Right. You have yeah. to press A. Why the fuck did they reverse? Like, what is the point of that? Why, why do they have two different buttons? And in this footage, you will see me accidentally do the wrong thing. Jump off, fall. Now I got to fucking climb up again. I don't understand why they made those two different buttons. Why is it not the same button? This feels like 2002 all over again. <laughs> it, it's just, like I said, I just don't understand why they made so many of the decisions they made in this game because it makes the game difficult for a dumb reason. And I think you're going to see it in this footage. I know the button to 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 uh, like oh. jump or to press is is A. Oh, but nope, that drops more. You have to press Y when you're hanging under oh something. My and God. it's like, it's it's just, why? You got a punch. It's not a jump, Nolan. It's a punch. You punch but, it up through the wall to flip over. Uh, obviously, so that, obviously. So that's the, that's the other oh, thing. And yeah, up, sure, whatever. <laughs> the y, y is the button that you interact with things to pick something up. Um, yeah. You have to be standing dead still. If you have any kind of movement to it, right. he dives. So you, I am constantly, you probably saw in that footage earlier when I was trying to pick up those bombs, I was constantly diving into the bombs <laughs> because I was trying to pick them up, but I had the slightest amount of movement. So nope, you dive into them. Oh. Like, I don't understand that. Oh, okay. God. Oh, you're, God. you're at the hey, roller coaster. Charm. Yeah, and I love it. There's so I many good it. ideas in this okay. game. Okay, but so hold so on. So look at this. Look, I'm good at Mario games. I, this is a shortcut over here. I found on my I own. I don't believe I you, Nolan. To, not based on this I, footage. <laughs> yeah, I understand how to manipulate Mario. Look at look at all the look, fucking Mario 64 when we did our Project M. I fucking did great at that. I I fucking gotten so I many think stars won, I remember in Odyssey. Like I understand how to manipulate Mario, but this game, it, like because they took away the long jump and like the grant like in the backflip and all this shit, they're they're crippling you and they're like, oh, you have to use flood. 
you have to use it. But the problem is often what happens is, and it's a frustration with the camera. So say I, I do a wall jump to get to a high spot and I want to use flood to get somewhere. Well, now I'm facing the wrong direction. And if I could just push backwards, the flood kind of aims behind me and it pushes you backwards. But the problem is the camera will automatically turn without me fucking touching it, which then throws off the point direction my analog stick is pointing. And now the fucking floods goes in opposite directions and I start spinning. I never wanted to spin. The, okay, so okay, it sounds like another thing. So say you, oh you start hovering with the flood, right? Okay. Um, well, okay. So <laughs> you need to you need to reach a destination, and that's in this area. It happens. I need to reach a destination. So I, I jump off of something and then I press the flood button. But the problem is I've pressed it a little too early. And so no ma now Mario is a level with an edge. I'm not leveled enough to where I can grab onto it. I'm just bumping into it. You can't release the flood to drop down a little bit and then re-engage it. No, like you've engaged flood once and you get it once. It doesn't matter if you used it for two seconds or twenty seconds seconds as soon as you engage it you cannot engage it again so i end up falling again it's just like i said i just don't understand the half the decisions they made in this i game. mean it, it is a it is a uh, it certainly is a mario <laughs> game full of very perplexing oh, decisions. i hate this game so much yeah no. <laughs> this is so frustrating okay. to watch okay guys well, wait till you get to the pinball stage have you gotten to the pinball stage yet, I, I, I remember the pinball oh, stage. no oh, no no, no one he's at my the question, roller coaster up, right sorry, now that sorry. is the worst part. anyway anyway what's up nick I'll, I'm done are you, bitching. Are you going to keep playing? <laughs> yes, I'll keep like, playing. I'll fucking is... keep playing and I'll beat this game because this game isn't going to beat me because I'm fucking better than Mario. All right, don't worry, everyone. If we put Super Mario 3D All-Stars on our top 10 list this year, I'm I'm going to make sure I capture the sunshine footage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not Nolan. We all know it that Nolan does not capture the sunshine footage. Okay, let me just say, let me just say, and, and I, I think... The, the, a big part of this is of, of the fact that I am actually really enjoying my time with this so far is because I'm also at the same time playing Paper Mario the Origami King and I am mm -hmm. so done with that game yeah. <laughs> and there's still like probably 10-15 hours left before I even finish it uh, it's just I'm, I'm jumping from like the for lack of a better term the babiest of Mario fucking games to something that's a little bit more demanding I guess uh, mm -hmm. And you know, I haven't reached, the, I haven't achieved the level of frustration that I'm seeing here. I feel like I'm going to <laughs> when I get to these points. Oh, yeah. I've only played like the first two worlds so far, and I'm like, oh god, this game is kind of a delight. It's challenging, but it's kind of a delight, and it has like, it's like one of the most charming. Uh, like I've as far as like the like the themes go, like I always kind of appreciated this more than like yeah. the galaxy theme. But I think sure. galaxy is a much tighter experience. Oh yeah, but for like sure. I mean, I'm really enjoying just kind of taking this game in. But Char charming, and yet this is the most violent Mario game ever made. It's the, it's the most violent, and the mo and the fucking this is uh, this is I think saying this is the Dark Souls of Mario games is appropriate. <laughs> well, like, actually, no, because I feel like that's giving it too much credit. That's like saying it's yeah. low design, and you just got to get good. It's because a game that's just, with a lot of really great ideas, but like the execution is a little I, I think it's like it's a lot of really great ideas that are like severely like tarnished by some like a, just a few really bad ideas like you start unlocking new uh, flood packs or flood like the, pack the jet functions pack thing, right yeah the yeah, jet yeah. Pack. you, you know rocket. you can't use that jet pack to move faster the rocket you can't use that to move faster in water Right. Um, you can't use that when you're in the water. You have to jump out of the water to use it. But the problem is, it's not an instant use. So you have to engage it, wait, and time it correctly, yeah. you then also jump have out to... of the water, and then it will go. You yep. also have to be above like a hard surface, don't you? I don't think you can do no, it over water can. at all. You can. You, can. you have oh. to time it. You have to, you you have to be in water. Hard. You can't you be engage. moving, otherwise no, you no. won't jump. Then you have to jump while it's fucking timed perfectly, and then it will work. But that, that should have just been an upgrade to, like, the main flood. But you have to switch to it. And, like, the way you do that is You have to find really... it in the world. Yeah. You have to find like, a box yeah. in the world and interact with it. Uh, yeah, I wish it was just, like, once you find it, like, it's a permanent unlock. You can switch yeah. between them. That would be great. Um, yeah. I, I do I do want to say, you know, I want to hear Ed talk about Galaxy. Cause that's, a, that's a great yeah. game. I, it, but I, I do... I do think it's worth mentioning too that there's a lot of discussion around the industry right now about three Mario or Mar Super Mario 3D All Stars because of like some notable omissions and some odd decisions like Mario 64 not being 16 by nine and you yeah know, it just seems like, like you could, having, they could have done a lot more for this collection right they could they could have but like this is still like Mario Sunshine is still a game that I never thought I would play again because I thought it was like it was always going to be relegated to the GameCube. It's just like, it's yeah, cool it, to have this in 16 by 9 though. 
I mean, it's it's. I mean, lazy. we're about to talk about Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two remake, which is not like, lazy. I know that that's like a beautiful like remake of. Those I don't want to. I don't want to defend Nintendo's decisions because I, I I do think that this is a missed opportunity. But I also especially because the they could have really tweaked the controls more. They could have, but at the same time, it is still really cool to have this piece of like Mario history so readily accessible. You literally let me borrow your copy of Mario Sunshine when I played it recently, Nick. I know. I mean, you're. What's your point? But you're damned yeah. if you do, damned if you don't. If you like try to tweak the controls, because it's like you're messing up with the original experience, right? Yeah. But, well, but also I, imagine I, like I how would also say that terrible. anybody that enjoyed that original experience is wrong. <laughs> All right, that's fine. <laughs> you're wrong. Fine. Well, no, we're, we're wrong. Let's Ed. not we're say wrong. wrong. Let's say misguided. That's just as they bad. Did, they didn't you... understand. That's just. A... How patronizing I, can I, you be? How I you deeply patronizing? understand this game, Chris Davis. <laughs> I really like this game despite its flaws. It's, yeah, it's, hard, I, it's hard to not to just flat out honest, not like a Mario, a 3D Mario game or honestly, any Mario game. I, I, anyone who says that they really love Sunshine, I get because if you've played it, if you've hundred percented it three times, you could pick this up and probably have no issues that a, a newcomer or you know a, a returning person who dabbled in it has right. Like, you'll, you'll have you no definitely issues get used until you to, get to the roller coaster. Yeah, it, you def- yeah. It, it is definitely the roller the coaster Mar- is not even one of the hard. I mean, what are you talking about? You the talking about the fight? Terrible. Are you talking Wait. about the fight with Bowser when you're on the roller coaster? No, the one where you have to like launch rockets at targets while you're going uh, around on the roller coaster. No, no. Okay, I th- I literally thought you were talking about this stage. No, oh, this no. stage. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no. There's there's some. There right. are some Let, sins against gaming in this fucking video like game. Like, why is it such a pain in the ass to get Yoshi and Delfino Plaza or, like, the different fruits and stuff? Like, yeah, they make it they make it so obnoxious, like, it's so tedious. You know what? It's a, it, At the very least, it's a fascinating game to discuss. <laughs> guess. All right, but let's switch gears a second. I want to hear about the game that, is, for all intents and purposes, is kind of a masterpiece, right? You yeah. were playing Super Mario Galaxy. Mm-hmm. On on 3D Mario All Stars, how is that going? I mean, so in in contrast, like Nolan, I I've only played Galaxy through once, right? And so mm-hmm. that's kind of why I chose to go put that one first. He hates it. He hates it. No, I love it. I, oh, okay, I, okay. Like, that would be a, good, a cool all twist. Games are great for 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 one their reasons. time, right? They're yeah. just fantastic games yeah. for their time. They're very different. Like, but they're very different and all great in their own way. Like the only thing that like, I guess bothers me a slight bit is I get somewhat like motion sickness with like going like underneath the thing and the camera following you weird, weirdly. I, it's kind of weird for me. Uh, but like, other than that, this game is, I mean, it's great. It's how, like, how are you, are you playing it with like the motion controls or with the no, pro no, controller? No, okay. I, well, I mostly been playing handheld. I haven't mm-hmm. done it on the, on the TV gotcha. yet. Um, but yeah, so the the on handheld you have to like touch the screen to be the Wii mm. mode. Guys, isn't um, isn't like things and stuff like that? But isn't this year also the like thirty fifth anniversary of Zelda yeah. too? No, 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 no. So, uh, next year. Next year. Next year. Okay, so guys, the only two games left that are being held hostage on my Switch or my Wii U are Wind Waker HD and Twilight, and Twilight Princess, Princess HD. Yep. Like Mario Galaxy is now free. Well, actually. Never mind. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is still shackled yeah, to my Wii. fucking Wii. Yeah. Just like three I mean, more like, games, and I can throw those things in the trash. But, yeah. well, but what Nick, about what Metroid about, Prime, Nick? What about <laughs> yeah, Skyward Metroid. Sword? Shut. Oh, my God. Okay, first yeah. of all, nobody says that, Chris Davis. Yeah, your Wii U is yeah. also I mean, the best Wii player. So, If we're talking about like things that could be done to make the game better, like making Skyward Sword, like improving some of the like really annoyances in Skyward Sword as far as like the, every time you pick up a rupee after you restart the game, it tells you what the description is or whatever, like things like that. Like that could be things that they could do in a 35th anniversary. But like uh, that's that shit they were doing all the way up until fucking uh, Breath of the Wild. Like Breath of the Wild was the first game not, where it was like they not, finally not stopped. The same, not the same degree. They did not do that that rupee thing where if you restarted the game, it retold you what the value uh, of the rupee was uh, in the older versions. They did because let me tell you, Nintendo, that's that rupee type the worst. Yeah. <laughs> also, fuck you, yeah. Nick. What about? Xenoblade Chronicles X. What about Kirby's uh, I Rainbow said shackled, Curse? What shackled about... to my Wii, dude. Mm, okay. Shackled. Like the only t- like two or three games I have left 
that I'm waiting for ports on that I like if I could port Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess to the fucking Switch, like the Twilight Princess HD to the Switch, man, I'd throw my Wii in the trash probably. Yeah, but, but anyway, get, getting getting back on on topic of Mario Galaxy. Yeah. So I've not I've not played the 35th anniversary one, but I have recently I I, play, I dabbled a little bit in that one as well within the past like month with the I, weird I, mode I, nunchucks. Uh, Yes, I, I probably played a good, I don't know, uh, six, seven hours of Galaxy and maybe a little more of Galaxy 2. Um, and dude, those games are so fucking delightful. Yeah. Like it, just the, 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 the bosses like, that. Mm-hmm. Thing that you do with the, the spin or whatever, that's just mm-hmm. map to a button now. So, so I, I will say that's probably, I, I did note after playing enough of that my wrist did get a little tired from yeah. constantly like every couple of seconds because it's not it's 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 not so much the pointing to collect the stars it's that you often do a spin attack right. uh, to interact with things it's and like having to all, constantly like fucking like uh only attack other than jumping on enemies like it's almost yeah. better than jumping on enemies because you get star bits instead of coins or whatever sure right. but yeah so i mean just i mean tightly controlled as it was on, on the wii you know um and the fact that I can play it with like a pro controller or whatever it's is. A, does it look any crisper? Like that's one thing I know because like, you know, they didn't do much with Sunshine in terms of the way it looks, but it is sixteen by nine. It look, I feel like it's a yeah. little bit smoother uh, looking. Sunshine definitely got a big boost uh, graphically. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Why did they not do the same thing for sixty four? Well, that's probably there's probably it's, a very complicated. I think answer it's, to that yeah, question. I think it's more difficult to do. Yeah. Um But yeah, Odyssey. Honestly, like I, I haven't, I haven't seen it. Uh, on this collection, but playing it on my Wii U, it looks fucking great still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I don't have. I like, keep saying Odyssey. I'm sorry, Galaxy. Yeah, Galaxy. I, I don't have like a a ton of like bad or even good stuff to say about it. Just besides, it's great and it's just as great as it's always been. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. I kind of like. I, I I feel like I should. I feel like if I played Galaxy or sorry, yeah, so if I played Galaxy and Sunshine kind of like back to back, it'd be perfect. I could. I could. Play sunshine I, until I'm def- frustrating. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't try to play Galaxy and then go back to sunshine. Uh, I guess you'd be yeah, throwing your. Very I, I was just. I was mostly saying it to be like I play sunshine until I'm angry, and then I play Galaxy to like cool off. Cool remember off, that I yeah. actually do love Mario. And then you play yeah. 64 because it's the best one. 64 is fun. I did watch Robin yeah, play like an really hour good. of 64, and it's great. Like, it, like I'm so happy that a version of Super Mario 64 no. exists on a handheld. No, the what? 64 has existed on so many different things. Dude, like, like, I, like in this version of it. Yeah. You can play 64 on the DS, Nick. Well, that, no, I know. You, you could that download DS it for, for like so many systems as well. I know. Okay, sorry. Mario 64 is a legendary game, and it deserved a lot better. I'm just not saying it didn't, Brad. I, I'm fully, I'm fully aware that Nintendo both under delivered on this, on the promise, or not even the promise. They didn't make the promise. They under delivered on this potential for this product. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like it's really cool to have these three games together in one place. I, and and to have even the small improvements that have been made is nice. Can I'm, we talk at the end about the, the best about 3D platformer here tonight? Yeah, let's do it. Tell us why Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 is better than Mario. Well, okay. As a well, platformer. I mean, better than Sunshine, at least. I, I look forward um, to this argument. This is really good. So I, I, not, even, I don't, not even that I don't believe it. Yeah, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, you know, a skateboarding game, a legendary game in its own right, honestly, right? Um, they remade one and two. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but like, I don't know, like half a decade ago, they remastered Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two. But that was like a garbage remaster and, and it didn't feel right. And that, that team that, that made that remaster w- went, ahead, went on to make Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, and that was even worse somehow. So it's just a shit show. And people kind of lost all faith that this series would ever kind of get back to the glory days. Well, instead of making a new cool Tony Hawk, they just did a really <laughs> good fucking remake of 1 and 2, which were two of the best. I mean, they're two of the highest rated games of that entire generation. And, and honestly, if you ask any, anybody who was playing games then like most of them, even if they had never played a sports game or like uh, any kind of game, 
that even came close to having a skateboard in it, they still played Tony Hawk. Everybody played Tony Hawk back yeah. in the day because heard of that play Tony Hawk back in the day. It I rev- have not it, played Tony Hawk. Yeah, you're a weird one. It, it felt revolutionary at the time because this was a big, uh, like it, like the way it controlled. It, it was honestly the way it controlled in like a 3D environment. I mean, it was it just it was like a dream, and um, it's it's back in a, a loving remake. It, and this is not just like a hdification or whatever right they redid all these art assets and and they they improved the look of these levels in like some really creative ways too right like like uh, you might remember the mall from tony hawk pro skater one or whatever right well now the mall's back but it's all like like decrepit and run down you know and it was never like that in the original like they, they give sort of like a theming to some of these levels that didn't actually have that before because it was very simplistic i was surprised when i booted up tony hawk pro skater 2 and it starts in the hangar right which mm. it was kind of like the warehouse in the first one it's just a really simple first stage to start out on right and um and it was like beautiful like, like everything was like shiny and 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 colorful in a way that it never was in the original like they made this like a really nice looking like like hanger and and i was like oh like i I didn't even realize it at first that that's what they were doing with these stages but man like some of them just look really really nice um now why is this a 3d platformer (laughs) well because i mean what is a skateboarding game right you know you know a skateboarding game is fucking skate right is is spending uh you know half an hour trying to perfect some grind or whatever and you know what grinding is hard well you know what grinding is not hard in tony hawk it's just something you do in the middle of your combo and something you do to help get you to secret and ex- previously inaccessible areas like like mm-hmm. these games are i mean the levels the level design in these games are constructed in such a way that certain areas are kind of like either either secret or just hard to get to inaccessible right and and it's all about sort of navigating the environment to get up to places that you couldn't get to before uh kind of like um i mean like a platformer obviously or a little bit like uh, if you've ever played like jet set radio or jet set radio future like those are platformers too even though you they look like rollerblading games or whatever the fuck or, or graffiti games, but they're actually just platformers on wheels. Uh, the level design in these games reminds me a lot of like Twisted Metal in, in, in the fact that there's all these like secrets and there's a lot of verticality and kind of a lot learning, of exploration. Yeah, a lot of exploration, mm-hmm. like learning the stage and how to get to all the different uh, uh, and then ha- having to get to all of them in time as well in time. Yeah, because they are timed runs and, and it's really shocking if you haven't played the original tony hawk games in a while like you have two minutes to complete your goal uh the good thing is you know you don't have to like complete them all in a single fucking run right so you can yeah. spend time kind of figuring out where all the letters of skate are right and then and then knowing that okay i know where they all are i can get them in time and then and then you know doing a run and, and hitting it all right or, or going for like a you know just a you know the the sixth score of that stage and getting a really high score combo within that two minutes right like there there's it feels like there's like this infinite skill ceiling to how good you can get and it has like the complexity of controls and maneuvers to really support that level of uh, of skill depth i'm not great at tony hawk right uh, i was gonna say well i mean fuck that. i mean <laughs> shut up nick i mean i want to hey, see you're better see you, than me you play, yeah yeah, I am, motherfucker. But I mean, but when, I've never played it before. Anytime I've ever played a Tony Hawk game, there's like a there's like a learning curve of like you're gonna bail a lot, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot, and, and that's just part of the game, right? And it's but but then you you all of a sudden you start you know figuring out how okay I can land you know my verts and my grinds and stuff, and I'm not belling so so much. Now I got to figure out how to like string all this stuff together to get like really high scores and combos. And and again, I'm not getting like you know 20 million point combos or whatever like uh, some people are out there because there are people who played these games and really obsessed over them. I wasn't like that kind of person. I would, I, I played the first three Tony Hawk games. I'd unlock all the stages and complete all the goals. But after I did that, you know, I, I, I was, I was just kind of moved on to the next game. Right. It looks like they really Tony- got the physics down. Oh yeah. 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 It, it plays like how I remember it. And, and it plays really great. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, I played a little bit of Tony Hawk two for a 2000 month because it was a 2000 game just for like half an hour or whatever. And my muscle memory had was all gone. So I was like fucking up in there while playing that game, like so badly. 
and it kind of transferred over when I got this game and I was still like fucking up really badly. I was getting really frustrated with the game, but um, now I'm getting a little better. Um, th- the thing is, you're not just, it's not just about scores and tricks and stuff. You know, you don't even have to play it that way. You can get through like all the levels in the game without even getting like the high score and the six scores or whatever. Right. Uh, if you just want to collect all like the, um, like like the the collection based stuff right like mm-hmm. collect like each each level has you know collect all the skate letters collect five of these hall passes or whatever or destroy mm-hmm. five of these like no skating signs or whatever you know you could totally play it as just sort of like an exploration platformer and enjoy it that way but so, uh, over time as you get good at it you're gonna start to get good at like tricks and shit too and oh man I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, I can't speak to why I didn't play this necessarily, but I, I can't help but think that like part of the reason might be I just didn't know what this game was. Yeah. Because if you had Good. told me it was this, I would have been like, what? Because this is. Dude, these games are fantastic. Yeah. yeah I know, really but are. like, I, I, I know, but I just like back in the day when these were, when these were hot, I just like, I didn't, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know this was a platformer. I thought this was, I thought the whole thing was about pulling off tricks on a skateboard. Nope. In a skate well, park. yeah. I mean, look. I mean, when I call it a platformer, it, when I, I mean, call it a platformer, I'm, I'm, I'm both being serious, but, but I also, also thought like, it was. This is obviously not rooted in like, like actual physics. Like it has its own no. special <laughs> physics system. Yeah. yeah. I, so I'm sitting here looking at you like jump, like skateboard off the top of a fucking like five car parking garage, and I'm like, or a five story parking garage, and I'm like, what? What? I didn't. Yeah. What? <laughs> It gets even crazier. Too. Like my actual favorite game in the series is Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three, because that's the first one in the series Agreed. where Agreed. they start to introduce like more like fantastical places to mm-hmm. skate. While the first two games, especially the second game, were like they're, they're all like very real. Lo- they're all yeah, real locations small. actually. Yeah, and and, and you know I, I'm I'm more of the you know like with Hitman right. The crazier the better, and mm-hmm. and uh, that's what I want out of out of Tony Hawk. The you know, but not 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 jackass crazy. I kind of fell yeah. off with Thug. But yeah. Tony Hawk uh, three, I think, is my favorite. Right. So, Brad, I have I have one question that yeah. might make me get this game. Yeah. Uh, does it have Superman in it? Uh, of course it does, dog. Yeah. It does. Oh, yeah. God there's, damn. But, but there's all there's right. a lot of new music too, uh, but it all kind of fits, right? But oh my okay. god, you put that Three Doors Down song? No, no, no it's no, Goldfinger. No. Yeah, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Super. Super. Yeah. Man. Doing so here I am. I yeah. Doing everything I can. Yeah, yeah. You 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 know the song, or you would know it if you heard it. Or maybe yeah, I, probably, I, I only know it from Tony Hawk or whatever, right? But like, here's the thing: loving remake of two like legendary games, forty dollars. I feel like Activision is really kind of setting the bar for like you can really go all out with these things. They did it with Crash, they did it with Spyro, and they were all forty dollars. Right? Who developed this? This remake? this is a uh, Vicarious Vision. Yeah. Oh. Is, is that is that is that right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know, um, but um, dude, they, they get it. <laughs> so like, why this, are taxi cabs thing, like trying to hit you? Here's one of the <laughs> things, right? Like in the original, like like level, uh, there are taxi cabs like driving around who, that can run into you. But in this game, in this in the remake, for whatever reason, they're driving like insane, which I think is hilarious because I definitely eat shit a lot because of these cabs. Um, well, the, well, the cars yeah. in the original Tony Hawk games were just like moving obstacles that really didn't have like any yeah. physics or anything to them it wasn't until They're later still games moving. That they added like <laughs> like sketching and 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 uh using them for actual you know skate yeah. tricks and, and and they do introduce some of the the more modern uh tony hawk mechanics like uh you can do reverts and and uh manuals uh, well, manuals they introduced in two, I believe. But but um, some of the stuff that was in Tony Hawk three or Tony Hawk four, like you can like jump off walls and stuff, uh, jump back off walls. You couldn't do that in Tony Hawk one and two. That's all there. So so you it, it makes it just feel like a much smoother experience than maybe it did in the original. But you can go into the options and make it to where you only have the the mechanics that were in the original games when oh. they came out. That if you want to play it That's that way but cool. honestly you probably shouldn't because it just yeah. feels so so great to play it's and weird that activision is the one that's like cranking out some of the some pretty awesome so remakes here's, here's, their... here's like a secret area that i had to like do a wall wall ride and then and then a jump and then a grind just to get up to and it's like oh i didn't even know this area was here or i didn't remember and it's like this is this is this is so cool i uh, I mean, I recommend anybody pick this up. Uh, if you if you have a lot of nostalgia for it, obviously it'll be great. But if you've never played a Tony Hawk game, I mean, 
I mean, there were great. This, they this were, is the best one to get. Yeah, I mean, this game this game series was getting tins back in its its golden days, mm-hmm. and and it's just as good as ever. So, Do, does the cool. collection include the? Uh, What's that better than sunshine? That, does okay. it include the uh, the exclusive levels that were on How the Xbox? Um, that I don't know okay. actually, because they released like Tony Hawk Two X for the Xbox at launch. It does, have the, it does have the level builder, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, sorry, that was a question from Monam in chat. Um, cool. Well, so, Brad, gun to your yeah. head, this or Hades for me? Get both of them, man. Come yeah. on. Bitch, I'm playing Red Dead. How am I supposed to do all this? <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> play a two-year-old video <laughs> game. And play Hades and Tony Hawk. That Hawk's two-year-old play. video game is better than all of these I'm games. I'm telling you, you will have a good fucking time playing <laughs> Hades and Tony Hawk. They're just pure joys. Let me tell you, though. I spent all night playing Tony Hawk and then going to Spelunky, and man, it fucked up my thumb. <laughs> I, like, I guess I clench when I play these games, especially Spelunky, and I'm holding down the trigger to run, and it's just. Ugh. I, uh, I'm totally when is that? My mouse hand is like fucking with me all the time. Yeah. Uh, when does Spelunky two hit PC? And no one's waiting on the PC 29th. version, so yeah. you'll have you'll be playing that before next week, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and I, I played a bunch of Spelunky, but then I started playing Hades, and it just sort of like Hades has this like really addi- well. Spelunky is very addictive too. Look, it's well, just a I, good time to be playing games right now. Let me be tomorrow, honest. Next week we'll be talking about Spelunky too. Uh, yeah. I can I can most certainly tell you that. All right, uh, I want to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to catch up with Ed. He's been playing a few other things that we haven't had a chance to talk to him about. Then we're going to talk about some big fucking news. Microsoft bought Bethesda and that or bought Zenimax actually, Zenimax. which includes Bethesda, obviously. They're the parent company. Um, so that has some big implications. So we'll talk about that. We'll answer some questions from Patreon supporters, Patreon and Twitch supporters, and uh, wrap up with our four player minute as always. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a minute. All right, welcome. God damn it. Every- <laughs> I mean, would you rather me have waited till we were already going? Yes. Maybe? <laughs> yes. Maybe? All right. <laughs> welcome back to the show. Uh, before we get into the big news, Ed, real quick, I want to just check in with you. There's a lot of games that have come out between the- since we last had you on the show, and you've played quite a few of them. What? Give us an update. What have, what have you been spending a lot of your time playing? Well... Let me start off by saying that I have a hundred hours in Neo One. Neo, uh, you play Neo One. Neo One, yes. Oh. Um, I was like, okay, I should play Neo One before I play Neo Two. You know, the classic uh, dealio. And Neo Two is not coming out for PC probably till next year um, at this right. rate. So probably, I wanted to yeah. just want to, you know, play Neo One. So I got through the main story, and then now I started the deal, the first DLC. So I'm, I'm, you know, it's. That, there's a lot of video game there. Yeah, there was a yeah. lot of video game, yeah. So I've been uh, basically doing like all the side missions as they pop up or whatever, so mm-hmm. trying to stay pretty close to level. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, my go-to weapons are the dual swords. Dual swords are, are nice. the bomb. Um, I just love like running around like this and swishing and slashing. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. The stances make that game uh way, way more strategic than like a, a normal dark souls game so yep uh definitely definitely a big fan um then i was uh i finished last of us 2 like this weekend mm, how, uh, how, how, where do you fall i i love it it was yes uh, no there are dozens of us i mean i mean there, <laughs> yeah, only i have dozens of i, I know i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> like I can see like where people are getting the critique, but I just think they just didn't play it. They just like judged it based off of uh, a little bit of footage that they saw or whatever. Um, it, it's Certainly a great feels game that way and, sometimes, and it, it's an, an improvement um, from The Last of Us One, like mechanically. And I like the Made thing. Maybe cry like that five times. Did. The thing that they did, yeah. You know, I the like thing that. they did. The um, thing that they did is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, literally yesterday. Uh, I'm, we're doing a couple of like happy hour Zoom happy hours with my coworkers as I'm uh, leaving. Uh, on Friday's, uh, next Friday is my last day, so we we played Among Us. I know no ah. one talked about it recently, 
Um, we about it I've been we've been playing it all the time. You should yeah, I mean, join us. I, I, I would love to join you because I mean, it, it, it's one of those games you can drop in and out of if you're playing in a big group. So I, I would mm-hmm. I would love to join you anytime. It, it's it's it, it is a crazy fun little romp of like i'm playing with one of my friends who's played way too much of it so like he kind of knows like a lot of the more of the meta strategy but you mm-hmm. know occasionally you can still uh trick him out by uh doing doing weird things like y- yesterday i i the game started i didn't realize it and i tabbed back in and my mm-hmm. fr- and one of my friends was like oh ed didn't run off at, at, towards the right like everyone else did or whatever at the beginning he must be the imposter i was like no i just like tabbed back into the game <laughs> like yeah. like yeah. It sounds like there's, something there's, a killer would say. Like, exactly. Yeah, there's there's lots of things that, like, especially when you're newer to the game, you might do something as a crewmate that seems suspect to someone who's put right. more hours into the game. You're like, I just, I didn't know what, they're like, what room was it in? And you're like, and there's like a thing in there. And you're like, 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 the like, rooms have like, names? Yeah, like yeah. when you don't know early on, that can kind of be to your advantage, especially when you are imposter because you're new to the game. And so right. you'd be like, ah, what is that? I don't know what that means. Um, I, uh, and, at first, I didn't realize that there was a map, and so I was following like the the design on the spaceship to like tell me where to go to places or oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then, and I figured out that you could open, press tab to open your map. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah, like how this footage is in like a waiting room for a game to start, and just like Yef is running around like a. Yeah, I mean, I, I do guess. that. I do that all the time. I'll just like run around. <laughs> yeah, but he's the room. only one. <laughs> like everyone's Nick, just standing there. It, and he's the one dude. Nick, it's it's it pronounced is. Jeff. It's actually not yeah. pronounced Jeff. It looks He's like yes to me. Looks like yes to me. It's pronounced yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So like it's playing with, with like uh, Chris Davis. When you're playing with people like you you know and you're in like a Discord server or a Zoom meeting or whatever, yeah. that's one thing. But it's when you start playing with like random people that you can either have kind of good experiences or very bad. One of the most frustrating things. Um, especially because there are so many people playing this game is you'll have some random people join in. And then when the game starts, if they're not imposter, they'll just leave because right. they wanted to play as imposter. And that's super frustrating, right. um, especially because it can throw off the balance of all of yeah. a sudden. Now there's one less crewmate in your, and it's, it's very, but there's not like an easy way to get around that. That's why I definitely prefer um, our yeah, community like, and playing this, with people. All the mm-hmm. settings that you can do, like have help with the balance so much that if you like, have it set for a certain number of people and one person leaves it can just throw everything off absolutely yeah mm. yeah um, and so but that can also be fun just because you know you're not used to their quirks or we know what they are you know you can maybe play off of that or maybe they're very good or maybe they're bad right. it's one of those things where there was this guy who was like super suspicious um and i i think i was a crewmate i wasn't even like a um, an imposter and i was like oh well like uh, how do i go into a vent like that red guy did i'm new to this game blah 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 <laughs> and uh, it turns out he was the imposter but I, like he didn't actually do anything but like he was just the way he was acting the way he was right. moving like you know it's always one of those things where honestly being the imposter in this game I, the more i've played it it is way more involved than being like a traitor in, in trouble and terrorist town yeah uh, like, because like, in, in trouble you like, pretend to be things right? exactly so the the problem with ttt is you don't really have goals necessarily like in in, in this like you have like the for the crewmates to win they have to get their goals done and so if you're not a crewmate and you're early like early on under your your journey of being an imposter if you're not paying attention to your goals and they're like oh what were your goals you're like um the thing it's like oh vote him out so right here banana bread killed me and and Mm -hmm. jared just happened to walk in the room right when he killed me and Mm -hmm. jared goes banana bread killed him and then banana bread's like no jared killed him and they were just fighting back and forth you know yeah that'll happen and i'm just screaming at at, through my muted microphone like (laughs) no no it's banana bread (laughs) yeah uh yeah i mean that's game. definitely a strat that's definitely a strat to like when there's two people in a room and you definitely need a kill to kill and and then report it real quick and blame oh, the yeah. other person and, and it just Jared did that later is he mm-hmm. like he killed someone walked away and then by the time i finished my task and got rid of the window that was in my face it said i saw the body and then he reported the body yep. you know that's definitely a strat yep uh, lots of fun anything else you wanted to uh drop in here anything else you've been spending your time on? i'm excited to play ghost of tsushima i uh oh yeah. i knew i i wanted to play that game more than last of us like while i was like trying to decide but i knew since i started last of us i wanted to finish that first so i'm really yeah. excited to pick that up and, and get going on that one um cool uh 
other than that, I, there's a couple of small little indie games that I that I want to try out before I talk about them more. So hopefully I'll be on the podcast more sooner than four months from now in order to talk about this. <laughs> Anytime things. you want. There's yeah. going to be a little uh, bit of quick, whiplash, I, though, and, going and, to Tsushima from Neo. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah, it going from so. Neo 2 to Tsushima. Yeah, I mean, but... honestly, that's the, one of the reasons why I didn't play Neo 2 at launch is because I was kind of, like, saving myself for Ghost of Tsushima. I didn't want to overload, like, that, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of that style of game or that, you know, time that setting or time period and that kind of thing. I just didn't want to overdo it. Uh, but I, I do. And also, yeah, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go from Sekiro to Neo two to fucking Ghost of Tsushima. I feel like that would have been just way too much. <laughs> um, but I do probably need to find some time to give that a shot before the end of the year. Um, real quick, just uh, Nolan and I both. I, so I started playing Superland Crash, which I. I literally did as just a means of like getting it off my list because I, I had started it. I had played like an hour of it when it first came out, and I was like, I just want to get it off my list. So I started playing it and then got hooked on that again because Superland's fucking awesome. It's, mm-hmm. it's still fucking awesome. So I finished that last yep. night. Uh, I don't have a ton to add. It's just more Superland and yeah, it, I, has, I a nice, it, it has a nice twist to, to, to it, I think, but it's pretty cool. It does. I finished it two days ago, and yeah, like the the thing you brought up, Nick. I think you were just happened to be asking a question about Superland DLC, and I had completely forgot that it had come out in July, and so I was like, "Oh fuck, I forgot about that." So I yeah, I started playing it, um, and yeah, it, it is very much. Yeah, I, I logged in last night and it said Nolan has played eight and a half hours of this lately, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yep. Yeah, I beat it in like uh, two or three days, like the, the, the just a couple of days. I mean, eight, eight and a half hours, which Pretty is sure. about the the average time I think it takes to beat that DLC. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's fucking, play. it is like, yes. it is choice. Uh, the way they like kind of take away all of your upgrades from the first game, but let you earn certain ones back, but in a different way. Um, cool. The twist kind of ending is is very nice. Um, the One of my biggest frustrations, and I think it's just, do the the scope it's definitely not as big as the like the base game um, it's much more but, contained yeah yeah so when you're using jump pads to lo- go between sections you can't know you can no longer shoot your uh teleport like yeah bomb thing and that's the only that's the smallest little thing that that's a frustration for it um but i think they definitely uh took some new twists with how to solve puzzles uh the the way you interact with the world it still blows my mind how many like just like every time i think i can't do a puzzle one way it totally fucking works yeah and, and like it, it's crazy it's just there's so much freedom in that game yeah. if you haven't and, played superland just period play fucking superland it's oh, so 100%. goddamn good 100 yeah, percent um the the one of the most exciting things in dlc in the dlc super superland crash uh, it, kind of a spoiler, but I'm not going to say it. But the very ending of the game kind of teases where the next one might be, and I'm super fucking excited about it. I keep that. forgetting they're making Superland 2. Like, I am super excited for... I know they're making answer. another DLC for Superland 1. Uh, yeah, I think the DLC... That's why this one's called DLC 1. And I think so DLC 2... This is teasing DLC 2, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I completely forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me that there's actually probably more Superland in my future. I'm um, very excited. Yeah, that's all. That's all I really wanted to say about. It. I, you know, it was a nice distraction. It's so chill and easy to just get into. So, mm-hmm. highly recommend that. All right, let's talk about the big news because whew, there was some, there's some big stuff this week. So it's finally been announced. They're not making Among Us Two anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> it I just came out that, today. Yeah. No longer making Among Us Two. They're just going to focus on Among Us One. So. Yep. All right, that's all the there news for today. Sure. That's that was the not most important how that news works. Today. Uh, so Microsoft this week, in a, just mm-hmm. just kind of like I don't know if anybody saw this coming. I certainly didn't see it coming. I like I I logged into Discord and was like just fucking just slam. But, Everyone was freaking out. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft buying another studio is not surprising, but buying Zenimax. That's is. a that's a big ass. Like that is a they bought the parent yes. company of so yeah. many studios and teams and talents. Like mm-hmm. they now Microsoft now they have essentially added Bethesda, uh, uh, Tango Gameworks. Uh, help me out here. I mean, uh, some machine games, game, machine games, machine uh, games. These software, are all software. Uh, these are all basically uh, first part. Yeah, these are all basically first party fucking Microsoft studios. Yeah, I mean they are, but like. 
technically speaking, but not, yeah, but only it, technically it's, speaking. It's, it, it's a, I mean, they are, but it's like, you know, no one's ever going to, they're never going to feel like Microsoft games in a way. Like, well, I mean, I mean, that was one of the, that was one of the things about Microsoft's they're gonna be initiative good. to like, well, that was one of the things about Microsoft's initiative to like buy all these studios. It, it was kind of like, you know, we never heard, like when Sony started cranking out all these amazing first party titles, Nobody ever was like, oh, but yeah, they just swallowed that studio up and now it's Sony. Like it was just like Sony has always owned these teams. Right. They're yeah. making games for them and they're they're amazing. This is like Microsoft was like, well, we don't have a lot of exclusive, amazing what, what, IP, so we're I'm, just gonna start buying up all these studios. What I'm what I'm getting at is you're never gonna call like the next Elder Scrolls game a Microsoft game. It's a Bethesda game. Yeah. In the same way that when Bioware puts out a game, we don't think of it as an EA game, even though it is an EA game. Does that make yeah, sense? Right. It's like, like they, second party and from first they existed part, yeah. as them as a, their own machine but, for but so Brad, long. Except, now they except, just have a different owner. The question except, then it, becomes: Is Elder Scrolls Six going to be on PlayStation? No. no. Well, I mean, here's I the thing. Like, no. Here's the thing. They said there was some very specific wording about like it'll be decided. Other platforms will be decided on a game by game basis. But like, can, how can you imagine a, a world in which Microsoft owns Elder Scrolls and lets that go to another platform? I can't. Yeah. Well, pe nope. people said that about Minecraft, well, but yeah, because at least yeah. not at launch. At oh, least not well, at launch. the problem the, the problem with that is is Minecraft is a printer of money. I wouldn't necessarily say Elder Scrolls is. Oh well, yeah, I mean, Elder, Scrolls, Elder Scrolls sells a lot of copies. No, I'm not. Oh, well, that's because fucking Bethesda milked Skyrim until it was dry, putting it on things. That's a different story. Besides, like Minecraft, just because you can buy Skyrim on fucking anything, including a fucking watch, probably doesn't mean everyone plays it. Everyone played Minecraft from like fucking six year olds to like 90 year olds. Right. It was so far wide reaching. It's a lot easier to get into than Skyrim. That's why I'm saying it was a lot, is a lot easier for them to justify, you know, <laughs> Minecraft being like just like a money maker. And, and it wouldn't make sense to not put it on other things. Yeah. And also, real quick, uh, the, this actual purchase that it's not that outlandish to just be kind of surprised about. Um, for one thing, my Microsoft spent two billion dollars buying Minecraft. Two billion. Mm, right. Okay. And so they the, spent seven point five billion buying well, yeah, Bethesda. Whole, but well, also before, like, the other the other thing but, is that uh so evidently the the investment company, the investment partnership, uh Providence Equity, I think it was called, uh, they had the majority stake in Zenimax. They had been wanting to offload Zenimax for years, like starting since 2016. I mean, the talk has been like this deal Disney has been bought Star Wars for less than this. Yeah, yeah, but like I, I think what you guys might be forgetting about is that Microsoft is going to use this to show that Azure can like yeah. support giant game development. That's right? where they're going to try and move it towards. So they're yes. they're going to make all these Zenimax for, for, for those that aren't familiar Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing right so it's like it, it's it's a proof of it's almost a proof of concept for other game developers to use Azure for their game for their game mm -hmm. development and game servers and stuff like that and then in addition to that X cloud is another version of like look what we can do with Azure it's like it's like a sell it's like a marketing uh, oh yeah, um, right? it, it is more than just them buying ownership of video games. This is not a oh we want to own Bethesda and we want to own Arcane. Right. It is it is it's, building. It's a, they are trying to build a bigger ecosystem. This is an investment, not in we want to sell games. It is an investment, and in we want to sell other I, other properties that we own to make more money. Right. Well, right. here's the, here's, yeah, the good, here's the good news. Like big purchases like this, there's a lot of downsides too. Like there's a lot of you don't like to see it, right? You don't never want a monopoly. You want more different companies in charge of different things instead of, you know, like a Disney situation or whatever. But right. one of the p positives is that now like Bethesda games are coming to game pass, you know, more day or one. less for free right. day one. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a plus, right? How are they, are they, do you, do we really think, yeah, I know Microsoft is saying that this is going to be, this is just how things are now, but can, I don't feel like that's sustainable. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like at some point they're gonna have to be I like, sorry, agree, we're cutting, but... we're cutting the cord. Well, at the end so, of the day, we benefit. Well, so, so, so I will say that obviously 
there are still going to be collector's editions and other versions right, and DLC. things that are included in, in DLCs that you aren't going to get for free, that those are kind of pure profit to an extent. Yeah, and right. those are not going to go anywhere. And people are definitely going to buy those. I, mean, I think it's get also the game a combination. Hand, that's more people to sell those products or those, those add-ons. That's, too. that's true too. Um, I think it's one of those things where while people will have access to these games it doesn't mean they're necessarily losing a sale just because i have game pass it doesn't mean i would have been buying those games anyway they are taking the almost like surefire x number of dollars a month over a maybe we would sell this user one or two games a year that's 120 bucks but if they're paying x amount already but, and then yeah. they're buying dlc and doing other things we're and all going to be making 20 dollars a month the the, the publisher year? and the developer does not get or yeah a year yeah or, or that's games. true too of uh, the publisher and developer does not get that full sixty dollars some of that goes Correct. to the retailer some of that goes to like uh, the publisher obviously yeah and the but how much are they getting like from this, these Game Pass dollars how I much mean, are these for, developers for, for Zenimax I don't think it matters right because yeah, it doesn't matter for it now well, right? I mean it, these other ones I, does, I've, heard, but... I've heard that like some of these like smaller indie developers are getting like somewhat of a decent uh pay pay bump out of this more mm -hmm. i mean more so like things like astrologaster or whatever that i, I i've looked at on, yeah, on yeah, yeah. Game Pass. like I, I never would have bought that game but at least it's like right. being exposed to me and, but and how Nick, is also, microsoft that, not bleeding that, money with this well hold uh, on that understand. being said game pass does not get every game forever games right. come and go from game pass yes yeah. will they be there day one Yes, but they won't be there forever. And maybe if but, someone misses that boat day one and they still want that game, they'll buy it. Do you think that the Zenimax games will be di won't be day one and, and then forever? I, no, I think they will. I don't think they'll be forever. I think, I think they'll I think they eventually. Will. I think it's going to be something similar to like what Nintendo is doing with 3D All Stars or whatever, where it's going to yeah. kind of disappear for a while. Well, and I then, think but I... maybe you can still buy a physical version or buy it standalone. You can't get it via this like Game Pass thing right now. Yeah. Can we talk about other concerns like so a lot of people have been thinking about like Bethesda, right? And Fallout and Elder Scrolls and the F Starfield, right? But I'm a little worried about some of the smaller studios because they paid $7.5 billion and I don't think it's because they really wanted the Evil Within IP or <laughs> what Tango Game or Ghostwire Tokyo or even the stuff that Arcane's doing. And it, it makes me a little nervous. It makes me nervous, yeah. but at the same time, I also feel like Microsoft, especially after this last generation, has has really been faced with the tr with with this realization. You mean the generation that, where they canceled Scalebound? Yeah, the, but but I'm saying the generation where they were constantly being, uh, you know, made fun of for like not having any good games, not having variety, yeah. not having you know, like I feel like Phil Spencer is always coming out talking about how they want games and more games and like variety and now like like they were talking about the just the other day like they're trying to make xbox a platform again for japanese rpgs again because it was it hasn't been that way for for so long and it's like it's like i feel like not more not than like, anything not right japanese now rpgs all rpgs yeah okay all rpgs yeah. uh, i think you just said that at to in regards to tokyo game well, Show. i, I, I think i think he was part of tokyo game i, Show. I, I think yeah, he was essentially that saying that, say that xbox did not sell very well in japan yeah like in happened. comparison right, right, right. to playstation no. just did not sell at all so obviously yeah, they do want some japanese based games potentially on their console that's so they can sell more not, so i i'm oh, just yeah. saying i'm not i don't think it i i'm i hear phil spencer talk about this and i'm not totally like i'm not i, I believe him I, it seems to me like they want a certain like there's a certain amount of just wanting to build their library and prove to people that like there is variety on xbox there is you know, all these games that we only once would have expected to find on PC, like indie, like on Steam and shit, or and and PS on, on play, the PlayStation platform, like those have those can exist in our ecosystem just as well. And I feel like they're trying desperately to prove that, not desperately, but like they're trying to prove that to people. So it, I don't think Arcane is in danger of like having pro, or Tango GameWorks is in danger of having like. Ghostwire Tokyo canceled or not being given no, the creative no. freedom to do things like it just seems like they you want say, more you say of that, that but like but like you know this could 
you know, look at Activision, right? Activision had all these awesome studios, right? Th that put out games that started to underperform. And now all, all they make is map packs for Call of Duty, right? But that that's Activision. Activision that's and Microsoft are very beast. different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Microsoft, Mi Microsoft they love... You no, know, but they, they don't they, shut they, down Phantom Dust and Scalebound, and but Microsoft you know, also has more money than. But Scott. yeah, I mean, they you know what I mean? Scalebound. Microsoft. Wants I mean, that could have been Windows. for any number of reasons. Microsoft okay. wants okay. to sell Windows. They want to sell Xboxes. Like it's a little bit of a different beast than Activision, who only makes money off of their game IPs, right? Right. Okay. So so, uh, who here is worth? I'm saying so, I'm not so, a big fan of this move. I'm just saying I feel like I don't. Well, Here's some other it's concerns. It's not all bad. How do you feel if you're Obsidian and you just started to make oh, yeah. a name for yourself again, yeah. putting out a Fallout clone, working on an Elder Scrolls clone, and now the company that owns you just bought Elder Scrolls and Fallout? Yep. Didn't they tweet, like, the shrug, like, eh? Did I, I see know. that? Well, they they tweeted like the shrug out. about somebody asking whether they can technically now do a New Vegas 2. Oh, see, gotcha, that, gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha, that gotcha. sucks so much, right? Because, because Outer Worlds got so much hype on the back of people shitting on shit talking Bethesda. Yep. You know what I mean? Like Fallout 76 had come out and everyone was like, fuck you, Bethesda. They didn't even like Fallout 4 that much. And then Obsidian comes along and is like, bitch, we made New Vegas. We're going to do our own Fallout, right? And it was hype, yeah. right? Like people were honeymooning like hardcore on that game, I think before they start to fall off a little bit. And then Avowed, mm -hmm. right? This was kind of a big deal for Microsoft because it was like the one thing they showed that day that's like, yo, I'll play that that's obsidian doing elder scrolls right based yep, in their yeah. pillars of eternity universe which was you know their recent games that that found success they, their own their own ip their own the, the thing is obsidian has always been this studio that's like oh we made the sequel to kotor we made the sequel to neverwinter nights we made the sequel to fallout 3 or whatever right they've never been like it's been a long time i think since they felt like i mean as a studio it seemed very they, they seem to be going in a very promising direction and now after this purchase everyone's like mm, you should make new vegas too you should be working on fallout mm, 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 mm. and it's like fuck off dude but you know what realistically does microsoft want a comp like an elder another game that's a lot like elder scrolls they, they don't want to sell they two games elder that can, that are competing against each yeah. other necessarily they don't want to cannibalize they... each other's sales exactly also, they're, they're taking gonna... money away from themselves kind also, of. they're not going to come out at the same time no, well, I mean, who knows? Actually, no. Dude, that, Val, the Elder Scrolls. Uh, what do you think? Avowed's coming out soon. It's gonna be like, I, I, like, like this I think it's coming out sooner Avowed. than Elder Scrolls. Why do you say that? Avowed may come out before fucking Starfield at this point, man. Okay, but uh, well, okay, maybe maybe Elder Scrolls. Uh, Starfield does come out first. But here's the other thing. What about a little studio like In Exile, which was purchased at the same time as Obsidian, who had some recent Kickstarter success with, you know, spiritual successor of Planescape, Planescape Torment and bringing back Wasteland, which is literally the spiritual successor to Fallout. They just put out Wasteland 3, this scrappy little studio, uh, and it was a really cool game. Are they going to make another Wasteland game? I mean, the is answer Microsoft that... going to pay for another Wasteland I game? I mean, if they I want the to. the answer's... I think the answers to that question is that, like, I don't think Microsoft gave that even one iota of thought. Like, I don't exactly. <laughs> They're like, just gonna be rolled into some other bullshit. But like, when you make a purchase that big, you can't really worry about. You, I don't you know. can't. I don't know. Like, so I, you can't the, worry about the, all the conflicts that are potentially being born. The in reason there. I worry about like, like, Arcane and Tango is because I don't think Ghostwire or Death Proof. Death proof, death, death loop, loop. Death loop are going to set the world on fire. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of excitement about those. I'm games. hoping Ghostwire does, but I mean, death, death loop, definitely, it's not going to set the world on fire. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they're both really fucking awesome. I like those studios, but you know, Microsoft's going to have to decide if. I mean, they're going to be looking to like recoup all this money that they Gigamir spent. Gigamir in chat had a good point. He says maybe games the scale of Ghostwire, Prey, and Death Loop are a better fit for Game Pass than being than like full priced like first party microsoft titles like maybe the like maybe if you're getting a lot more games like that on game pass they can start to like ease up on doing the day one like nobody's, releases of nobody first party studios been questioning the value of game pass you have to start to wonder though if if between a, uh, having a 300 hundred dollar system and like a lot all of a sudden a lot of new ip exclusive for game pass or whatever um does 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 uh microsoft start to kind of take back like at least in, in in some western countries like like you know um 
like the US, like like uh, you know various parts of Europe, a market lead with the Xbox over PlayStation, right? Like like the 360 era. Um, did they start to kind of pull back a little bit on the the quality of Game Pass? You know, I mean, be, I, I, I mean maybe. Be, because that's what I'm saying. Remember, like, I don't feel like they can leave it the way it is forever. I don't. I don't feel like that's. But you know, PlayStation Plus back when PS3 was struggling was like amazing. <laughs> They yep. gave so many amazing games out on PlayStation Plus. Then in the mm-hmm. PS4 era, when they started to dominate again, like, dude, PS Plus sucks now. They, they mean, started well. They it, it, they started scaling it back, and then scaling it back even more. Yeah. And then, yeah, the past few like I don't know six months, they have not been giving out good, maybe even longer, maybe well, even almost a, like two months ago. <laughs> okay, hold on. That is a very different scenario. Yes, there was a great game on PlayStation Plus, but I'm saying add up all of the games in the past six, eight months and compare that to just keep going back a, a six month chunk, a six month chunk, yeah, and yeah. looking at the games that they gave out. They have definitely gone downhill. I'm not saying there hasn't been one or two good ones. I'm saying when, 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 the overall deal every month has gotten much worse than it used to be. Right. Yeah, when PS Plus first launched, they gave you like every single Vita game that was worth playing. <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like like every so Vita game worth playing. Yeah. Well, no. Well, they gave you like like all of them really, like Uncharted yeah. and Gravity Basically, Rush yeah. and and like yeah, all the ones. I'm just playing. Want. I'm just playing. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's very it's very interesting. I'm I, well. I was saying this on my stream yesterday. I guess it's sort of a final thought. Th- this is like it's a big purchase, right? Right. And it's kind of exciting because of how big it is, right? But it's not a very, like, sexy acquisition, right? It's not one of those, like, now dreams can happen. No, it's just going to be Bethesda kind of functioning how it did probably going forward. All these games Here's that have question. been announced in development, they're probably going to keep going forward, right? But when people – you know, Konami was trending the day that they that Bethesda – got purchased everyone because, was like sony save us because that's an example of an acquisition that people want to see because oh, konami's yeah. has all these legendary ip that they're doing nothing with and if microsoft yep. owned them all of a sudden oh well maybe maybe microsoft can bankroll a new metal gear or a castlevania or a contra or silent hill or whatever right there it is. but here it's just it's just you know here's things here's are one keep moving along and it's like okay one now a different thought. company owns it one final thought and just maybe a hope and dream uh, is that maybe some of the good because we talk about like oh no does this mean like arcane or or, or tango gameworks are in tr- are potentially in trouble or they're going to be Not they're going to have less creative maybe. freedom but i mean like what if it goes the other way and microsoft's like here we're going to pump more money into the into the projects that you know bethesda was funding their projects before and it's like microsoft can back e- the evil within three with a much bigger budget than Bethesda probably could, I would but, imagine. But, but what does Microsoft care about Evil Within Three? If Evil Within I mean, Two, so I mean, crap. Resident Evil is. We're talking about the the guy, the creator of Resident Evil. It's like, come on, <laughs> fuck you, dude. Because the creator of Okami, the creator of Devil May Cry, Resident Evil Two, uh, Beautiful Joe was working on a brand new, their most ambitious game yet, and Microsoft said, "Fuck you." So you know, I, Shinji Mikami's legendary, but but, but, so but again, I need your burn again, from scale down. Bayonetta, I know you're burned from Scalebound, but like, I there, there's a there's lot a, that was going on there that yeah, like, missed deadline. Dude, they needed like a that. first party like, game so dude, bad. Dude, that's that's that game could have been in. They needed a the, that game could have been like unplayable. Like that could have just been like this is not working. We have to cancel it. I mean, you could I mean, say I'm not saying it was. Any we'll game never, before we'll it comes never, out. We'll, we'll yeah, never, we'll never know that. Scalebound could have been their Skyrim. It could have been, but it also could have been their fucking wet or something. I don't know. I just pulled that out of my ass. Mickey <laughs> <laughs> Kami was going to make a wet. I mean, maybe. Mm, remember just, that game? But, like, this is Platinum Games. Like, they make games all the fucking time. I mean, it, what it probably needed was more time and money, right? right? And Microsoft was done dumping money into the project. But, like, maybe From why? What? From what I read around the time that, it, that that happened, they were done dumping money in the project just for Kamiya to keep missing deadlines. Or yeah. Kamiya's team to keep missing deadlines. So, like, if you just if you keep asking for two more weeks or um, two more months or whatever over and over again, then, yeah, they're going to shut down your project. You well, can't yeah. get anything done. I, I, know, I know how that works. But remember, Microsoft has infinite pockets, right? And they 
sure shit didn't have a lot of interesting exclusives for the Xbox One, so maybe they should have. But 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 neither of those facts changes the fact that maybe that project was just not yeah. sustainable. They, they were like, more interested in resetting basically everything that happened. Platinum the Xbox One. Like, how long do you keep saying effort, yes? Honestly, how long do you keep letting them go? Yeah. Okay, we do need to move on. A lot of speculation. It's a I'm lot reining of it in. About, yeah. I'm reining it in. The we're trouble, moving on. How troubled that project is. We're moving on. You know, me as host is saying, "We're shut up, Chris Davis. We're moving on to the next." I was going to talk about topic. another topic. Okay. Phantom Are you going to talk about Phantom Dust? Is no? it on the dock, Chris Davis? Uh, no, but it's it's related to the Bethesda thing. Just say it, Chris Davis. Like you're instead of moving on to the next. There thing, was a conspiracy for... theory going around for the past several days that Microsoft officially had to come out and make a statement about. Uh, they noticed a few things going on with uh, the marketing of the new Xbox controllers, and they've take they they've people have been reading into the past several months of like Phil Spencer talking in front of things because because uh, evidently in oh, one video had, yeah in one video yeah. he actually had the Xbox Series S in the background on a bookshelf and nobody noticed it. Well, yes. people have been using that to look back at further videos, and people were honestly thinking that analyzing they were, every item in his home, analyzing everything, and they they believed that they were uh, going to announce at TGS that they were acquiring Sega. Oh yeah, well they had officially come out and say the words, and these words, and I quote: "We will not be announcing any new acquisitions soon." That's one of those sexy acquisitions I was talking about. That would have well, been really the, good, though. That sexy acquisition is not happening. All right. <laughs> next news topic. I just want to bring it. Uh, we, this one we don't need to spend a ton of time on. I know you're going to be tempted, Brad. But Michel Ancel has yeah. left Ubisoft. This is now, now, not a news topic. I'm, is it not? not? This, I mean, I, I feel like it, I for our show in particular. Stadia. We're going to talk about that next week. That happened today. We'll talk about that next week. But Michel Ancel, the creator of Beyond Good and Evil and Rayman, has not only left Ubisoft, he's left video game development. He's left the industry to pursue his second passion, which is wildlife. He's creating a wildlife sanctuary. Uh, in So that begs the question. So while he, in his announcement or in Ubisoft's, an, in Ubisoft's announcement of this, they said, uh, their statement said that the both projects, Wild and and Beyond Good and Evil 2 are both continuing, are both in a state where they're continuing development autonomously without Michel Ancel's involvement and everything is going great. First of all, Wild still exists? What? <laughs> Do y'all remember this project? It doesn't exist. Yeah. Look, look, it didn't exist anymore, just like Beyond Good and Evil 2 doesn't exist anymore, even though he says that, that both these games are just going, going strong. Like, fuck off. Here is my question. Like, like, the, the only reason I think that Beyond Good Evil Two exists is because Michel Ancel was like, like Ubisoft was like, fine, just just do it, right? Like the only reason they were doing that project is probably because he was putting in all the work, turning out all these like, you know, he brought back Two D Rayman and stuff, mm -hmm. and he was doing all these Rabbids games, and and it's like finally just, <clears throat> just just go ahead and make it, and it's like. He's probably the only person like keeping that shit alive. Okay, here's my question. Because Michel Ancel's like approach to Beyond Good and Evil 2 has become so like Peter Molyneux esque at this point that I'm wondering if two, one of two things might happen now that he has left. Either one, they're gonna be like, Okay, he's gone, let's cancel it. Or two, he's gone, now we can just make it a normal video game. And like you're suddenly you're gonna start seeing this become just like the like they're gonna start stripping away all of this obtuse bullshit that we keep seeing, and it's slowly going to morph into just a fucking single player, like fucking, you know, like Zelda style game, like the first game. You know what I mean? Like, like what if that happened? Is that totally out of the out of the question here? Yes, it is. Stop it. Microsoft Stop canceled it. Scalebound, so Beyond Good and Evil Two is gonna be canceled as well. Beyond I mean, Good never existed, Ed. <laughs> I mean, Beyond Good and Evil Two was a hope and a dream. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, the uh, expectation uh, that Levitt's going to finish Beyond Good and Evil Two now. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the expectation that Beyond Good and Evil Two being a single player game only is like. I mean, that's not necessarily no. what I meant. It's it's mostly just I mean like like nothing about that. We we've, we've seen that game like three or four times now, and it has never been 
I mean, have we though? Game. It is. I mean, well, that's I'm, why Brad I'm, said "game" in quotes. Like we have yeah. seen footage of assets that look like beyond good and evil. They have shown <laughs> it. A couple, they've shown <laughs> it. Times, and it's yeah. it's never normal. It's never like okay. This it's the sense. it's the equivalent of when the PS3 came out and they showed a tech demo of Final Fantasy VII. Like it is that. It is just like it's a concept. Yeah, I, I, like I, like I'm. I don't. I mean, realistically, I think it has a much better chance of just being dropped and like hope like being brushed under the rug so that hopefully no one will ever remember that it existed in the first place but it's also one of those things where it's like it's so high profile it's been teased for so long that i feel like they can't do that without throwing gas on the fire but the, the weird thing is is like beyond good and evil was like it was a hidden gem it was you know it wasn't this big huge hit but the people who loved it really love it and the people who love it don't the thing that they've been showing that's called beyond good and evil 2 is not what beyond good and evil fans wanted so no it's I, not. Like, this is a game no one actually fucking wants except allegedly crispy um why Shots does fire. it still exist so i don't know anyways that's all that needs to be said i just i think the more honestly the more interesting part of that new story was he mentioned the game wild again which <laughs> i think everybody just assumed was gone like i don't know <laughs> like now it's on people's minds again so they better actually be working on it you know what i mean um no all right <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. All right, that's it for news. Uh, let's move on to community. Nolan, we have three questions from our supporters mm-hmm. on Patreon and Twitch. Did you see them? They're in the doc. I did. Yep. Cool. You want me let's to read do it? it? Yeah, let's right. do it. First question this week from Neil. Who in the podcast crew can drive a manual transmission? What kind of car did they learn on? I am personally, I personally am a manual elitist, and I refuse to own any car equipped with an automatic. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> what what whatever uh, i can i learned on a mazda protege i am capable of it but not i mean i it's been i you know i i drive a manual transmission like once every like eight years or something at this point so like can i do it without stalling it at least once probably not <laughs> <laughs> i once had to drive my roommates i my my roommate once got really drunk at a party and I had to drive, we were in Austin, but we lived in San Marcos. I had to, so he got so drunk, I had to get him into his car and drive us back to our apartment in San Marcos. And he had a manual and I was like, and it was like two in the morning. And I was like, I learned real quick. I reminded myself real quick <laughs> how to drive that thing. And I think I made it without stalling at that time. That's like the, probably the best time I've ever dro- driven a manual transmission. Every other time I've done it, in the zone. I stalled it. Mm-hmm. I was in the zone, man. I was par- I was like terrified. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is the worst possible time for me to be learning how to drive a fucking manual. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I, I've told my story maybe even on the podcast before about how I was driving. I was going to UT here, right? And uh, I was driving I was driving my Isuzu Rodeo. I love that. <laughs> that and and uh, I got a call from my mom. And she was like begging me. He's like, dude, your your little brother just learned to drive, right? And he doesn't want to drive his car, which was a hand-me-down from my older brother, right? The which was this Mazda protege. He's like, he's like, uh, can you just drive to Houston and and just take this car and give him your Isuzu Rodeo? <laughs> and I was like, fine whatever better gas mileage i don't fucking know but i didn't know how to drive manual at the time and i'm like i don't know how to drive stick he's like yeah but your little brother doesn't want to learn how to drive stick I'm like, fuck that guy <laughs> okay i was like whatever and my dad was like out of town or whatever he would have probably taught me but my mom's like i used to drive manual back back in the day i could i remember how i can show you so we we go to the like the dullest parking lot oh wait that's my high school uh we go to the parking my high school parking lot and i'm learning how to drive stick and i'm like i'm kind of getting it i'm stalling a little bit and it was kind of rough and i was like okay i guess this is my car now i'm gonna go back up to austin where i live and go to school (laughs) houston's very flat (laughs) i drove to austin i'm like wait there's hills here this is completely different i had no idea what to do i was horrified i was like at stoplights and stop signs on on hills and rolling back and i'm like what do i do i don't know and i I was stalled so much and for a while i was kind of afraid to drive in austin because i kept stalling so much but i eventually got the hang of it i was really mad at my brother (laughs) i'm still i'm still mad about that one yeah uh anybody else i Uh, i learned 
I, I all, all of my recent car, I mean, all of the cars I've personally owned have been automatic, but I did learn to drive on a, it was either a 98 or a 99 Ford F-150 manual. Wow. Um, that's what I learned to drive on. Jesus. I, was prob- <laughs> I was probably 15 at the time. Uh, it, right, dude? Yeah, that's what I fucking grew up with. And my dad was like, he's like, you're 15. Let's teach you how to drive. And we went out and there was a big, long dirt road. And he's like, do it. And I fucking learned how to drive on a manual Ford on a dirt road. On dirt road, um, I probably I know I know in my brain what needs to happen to shift the gears. I know how to use the clutch. I I understand it conceptually. Could I jump in a manual right now and fucking go without stalling? No, uh, but, but I mean I could probably eventually get it. There was one. I feel yeah. I don't remember where I was. I think I was in Florida once, and I was driving a, ma- a manual under strange circumstances. But point is, I was like, I got this. This is good. We're good. And then I was at a stoplight, and I was like confident. And all of a sudden, like the light changed, and I was like, and it stalled. And that was like heart yeah. stopped. Like just like, like oh god, panic. You learn to drive uh, manual on an old truck, and it's very different than like you get into oh, like, a high performance sports vehicle. It's way easier to stall on that. Oh yeah. yeah. If you're not used to it. All right. Next All right, moving question. on. Next question from the drunken merchant. Have you guys ever brought something specifically? I think he meant bought. Right, bought. So I know it is bought. I read it wrong. Have you guys ever bought something specifically because a video game inspired you to do so? This ex- this is excluding gaming merchandise. For example, after witnessing the Final Fantasy VII remake quote massage scene i instantly went to amazon and bought a hand massager, which is amazing. I also noticed I ordered a lot more take out when cooking food in final fantasy 15 what about you guys that's funny he's like he, he plays final fantasy 7 is like oh that's hot i'm getting myself a hand massage <laughs> <laughs> uh um hmm. oh god i feel that's like a uh, i got like i probably ate like an influx of uh sushi when i was playing uh muramasa the demon blade because all the food and that was was like sushi and i was like constantly good... like just okay. like <laughs> You are I don't know if that counts. Before that, cup of noodles from Final Fantasy 15. I didn't like go out and buy a cup of noodles. Just wanted to say that. I base a lot of my reading off of games and TV shows and stuff like that. So like that's that's I, a good that's a good I, one. Yeah, it's it's not gaming merchandise, but like I, I started reading the books uh, recently, and I'm working my way. I did start reading The Witcher after the second game. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I used to read a lot of WoW books when I uh, played WoW. So, kind of. Don't you still play WoW, technically speaking? I do not still play WoW, technically speaking. I'm clean. Oh. I got my one-year chip back in March. Oh, wow. Nice. Interesting. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> do they actually give you WoW chips? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> they, mail, they mail you a, a, a uh, little coin and, with a, a coupon that says, come back. Yeah, yeah come, back. Please come back. Hey, you, you should play Final Fantasy XIV, because according to our community, it's not a gross, addictive MMO. I know. I know. I, I think they say, and they say that every, when they play it every day, they're like, "This is not addictive, guys." I play it ten hours a day every day, but it's because the game is that good. You know what? I, I've been listening to podcasts more frequently late, lately again because I'm trying to get back in the habit. And and uh, I, I've heard a lot of you know when everyone's talking about MMOs or just online games in general, they throw the word dailies around a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, I think I think the rule for me is if there's a game in which the common phrase of dailies is thrown around, I'm not going to play it. There I, was don't a, any, I don't want anything to do with that. It's like <laughs> your good drive that I used to have where I would like do my dailies in WoW and then I'd log off immediately and go play some other, something else. <laughs> yeah, da- dailies are, are stuff that's supposed to be like, oh, you, you log on for maybe an hour maximum. Term. I know, but it's That's just still like a decent it, amount of time. But that yeah. in, daily, the word dailies implies you have like, you know, quote unquote responsibilities, chores, yeah. chores, chores that you need to do chores. daily. And I was like, that, yeah, no, that's just not for me. It's, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it's um, not for you, but Final Fantasy 16 might be. You know, I went out and bought. Sorry to get back to the question. I went out and bought uh, a fucking. Uh, t- what's the tent stuff they use in Final Fantasy 15? Uh, this this joke's not. Yeah, this joke's not landing because I forgot the name of the brand. Uh, I went out and bought a Coleman tent. No, I did not. Actually, the thing is, I I got a tent f- when we did that camp out. 
and I think it's a Coleman, but that was before Final Fantasy 15, so I can't attribute it to that. No, that was around that. the same time. We had talked about filming something during that camping trip that was like a Final Fantasy like joke. Like, oh my god, that was did definitely. We, did that game inspire us to do that? I don't. I think we had already planned on camping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the final question this evening from Ash from the Burdekin. Burdekin? I never know how to say that. Burdekin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What are some of your guys' favorite non-video game hobbies? Porn? I'm just kidding. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) movies and television is always Uh, a big one. mm -hmm. I think all of us here watch lots of shows and movies. Uh, yeah, yeah we'll try yeah, to yeah. anyway. Uh, I go through phases where I'll like do like little personal projects or whatever for like coding stuff. Hmm. I'll, so, yeah, I'll you know, coding is is I don't do a ton of that outside of work, but I do dabble and try and learn some new stuff. Um, and you know, the the four player website has just been kind of an ongoing project that yeah. I enjoy dicking around with. Um, we go hiking a lot. I, uh, I mentioned is good. Outdoors mentioned is good. National parks and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But like also like state parks around this area. We went camping two weeks ago uh, mm-hmm. at Garner State Park and then uh, hiked around there. So that was fun. That's probably a really healthy, like just for like mental health thing to do, especially at a time like this, yeah. I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, a lot of people, like if you're going, I mean, it's hard to secure a spot at like a state park if you don't book it like way ahead of time. So yeah a lot of people are camping right now <laughs> yeah i know this is he asked but non-video game related but and this is kind of tangentially video game related obviously but like i really i really get into like you know when I'm making like the videos and stuff that we put out you know just the the act of like you know thinking about my talking points and like recording audio and recording footage i know it's video game related but it's also it's fun it's, it's fun putting together the videos and sometimes it feels like Chris Davis is having to pull our teeth to get it done, but yeah. generally it is fun. It's uh, I'm gonna start this, pulling this, teeth pretty soon. No, I thought about that the other night. I was like, oh October first, very close. Uh, <laughs> so I also I, I run. That's my my hobby that I do uh, four days a week. Um, and then I mean, especially since you know the social distancing has started me and Bernadette walk the dogs like almost every day as long as yeah. the weather is not extremely horrible you have to uh, walk every day after work. like at least yeah. a half hour walk um uh, which is nice and the, we've been kind of mixing it up and we try especially now that it's getting a little bit cooler uh we'll probably i don't say necessarily go on longer ones but it kind of venture off our normal path um to other areas and stuff around here um but yeah i think that's mostly i mean i dabble in woodworking i don't do it enough i'm in the middle of a project right now but that's also just hard because i don't have a dedicated space Mm -hmm. i like uh i like live music a lot now is obviously a really bad time to to really be into that uh (laughs) but yeah i really really miss live music i really do Um, i'm trying during my time off i'm gonna try to swim like twice a mm. week or something like that Uh, i was getting back into swimming right like i was like going to the gym like Three I times a week. I was swimming two days a week, and then this that started, and I, all my progress yeah. is just gone. It's so funny. All y- y'all keep talking about things you don't do anymore because of COVID, and for me, it's like pre Henry. <laughs> <laughs> now my hobby is entertaining Henry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hobby. Mm, no, it's I mean not. it's more of a responsibility. But hey, you know, what can you do? Mm. You just got. Gotta- I you miss got, camping. Like, I haven't been camping since since you know we had Henry. <sighs> yeah, we were speculating. I was, uh, to, I was about to utter the words "we should go camping," and I was like, "Nah, nah, it's a bad idea." We were speculating uh, two weeks ago, like what we'd do if he had kids and stuff while we while we we're camping and how we keep them entertained, stuff like that. Man, I'm I'm I, sorry, Brad. I'm really sorry. This is not aimed at you. I'm really glad I don't have kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, you know, he he's fine with it all, sort of. <laughs> he doesn't get to go to cool like play places and stuff anymore, but or That's you know school. <laughs> <laughs> he was enjoying preschool quite a bit, but he's kind of forgotten oh what God. other kids look like. Dude, when when we when we moved in uh, to the house, the new house, like my parents came over to bring some stuff 
and they were like, let's get a picture of you in front of the new house. Like, you know, as, as is customary, new couple moves into a new house. Let's take a picture. Is and that, they're like, is that a thing? Not, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, right? No one, yeah. I'm assuming yeah. y'all took a picture in front of your house when you moved in? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, take a picture, and then they're like, all right, put now put, now one with your masks on to, <laughs> cap- to capture the, the moment in time. Yeah. So... Uh, anyways, I, I think that about covers the question. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys very much for your questions. If you are interested in asking us questions on future shows, uh, you can do so by supporting us on Patreon at, at $1 a month. That's all we ask. $1 a month on Patreon or more, uh, and you can ask us anything you want. Uh, we, you can ask questions, and even if we don't get to it the next week, we always keep track of those questions, and we'll eventually get to them. So um, you can also support us on Twitch. So if you want, it's patreon.com slash four player or twitch.tv slash four player podcast. You subscribe to us there. That's another way of doing it. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, also, I realized last week I didn't do this, but uh, I wanted to read some feedback from the last show because we haven't done that in a while. Um, and I have only one comment to read tonight, so it'll be quick. Slop Dog from last week said, great comments y'all had on what the future might hold for an all digital future. Uh, it's all going to come down to the consumer looking out for themselves, backing up downloads, managing accounts you buy your games on, supporting emulators, etc. Like Brad said, do not trust companies. It is not in their interest to look after a digital purchase that you made several years before for a game that might no longer be on their platform. Uh, media preservation is in the hands of the fans, and digital pro- digital provides a lot of advantages as such. So, yeah. yeah I uh, think we're actually I- coming to a, uh, a point in like the digital like landscape where there's actually might need to be some different like copyright related laws to digital preservation mm-hmm. such that like we're able to to kind of preserve all these things uh so that we don't lose them uh yeah. like library congress level of like preservation kind of stuff like that um i yeah. hope so democratizing really... that would uh would be helpful. I mean, there, there's that. tens of thousands of early '90s DOS games that probably don't exist anymore. People can't find them anymore. So yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, all around great, great response. Um, if you if you want to chime in or have, if you want to say anything after any of the discussions we've had tonight, if you had a thought and you're screaming at your computer screen while we were talking about it, uh, you can go to fourplayernetwork.com, find the post for this episode, and leave us a comment, and we will read it and respond to it next week and now before we wrap up i want to do our uh supporter spotlight this week uh who is powerful musk ox is his name uh hold on i'm pulling it up here okay oh sorry her name apparently eleanor is powerful uh, musk ox from sweden um she's not here tonight because obviously sleeping middle of the night uh so I just want to read a couple things of her responses to our uh, gaming-related questions that we ask our paid supporters on Patreon and Twitch to answer. Uh, I like to read their top five games of all time. So here we go. I'm going to... Re- I can't tell. Okay, so number five. I can't tell if she did like one through five or five through one. I don't know. So Final Fantasy. Let's let y'all guess. Tactics. Brad says tactics. Six. Um, I'm going to go... I have faith, eight. Nolan. I... Wait, what'd you say? Eight. I knew. I N- Nolan somehow always guesses it. Final Fantasy. Eight. He always guesses eight, though. Not always. It depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> what about Two. powerful musk ox made you guess? Oh, this is definitely an eight kind of person. The musk. Oh, the musk. Okay, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> my very first Final Fantasy and my first JRPG really made me love the genre, even though I had a hard time getting past Ifrit when I first started playing it. That time, man. You gotta, you gotta make it in time. You know, there's something really magical about that game because just, you know, it's not my favorite in terms of like mechanics and shit, but like, just like I remember Balam Garden so vividly, and I remember like just the way the summons were used and like fighting Ifrit and Shiva and all that stuff. So that game's that game's pretty special. Uh, number four, Shiva and uh, and uh, Ifrit were in the Final Fantasy 16 trailer. Yep, they were. They were really showing off those summons because they want people to know we have summons in this game. Unlike our last one, there's actually <laughs> summons in this one. They exist. God, I hope so. Uh, Age of Empires. Two. 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 It's two. 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 Yeah, that'd be two. Another option. Uh, played it a lot when I was young and picked it up again when I was at university. Never stopped playing since. 
this is a British person. Yeah, no, Swedish. 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 Swedish okay. person. I guess European it's a European person. thing to call yeah. it university, right? Yeah. Uh, number three, and this is a right. This is a recent one. Uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts. Oh wow! Yeah. Like right. game of the year of 2019. Yeah. Amazing wow. aesthetic and music. I played that again last week. It, it's a really good game because it's to play in one sitting because it's only yeah. like an hour long but it's like playing it's like listening to a music album in one sitting that sounds really interesting that you know just, just knowing that like a game that, that's that quick and that short is you know t- top five games of all time material sounds it's a good uh good it's, playing game to play yeah i'll jump so down to real quick over. yeah absolutely i'll jump down real quick too because we we also ask what is the game that you consider to be underrated that you would wish, wish more people would play and why and they said, Sayonara Wild Hearts. It's an amazing game released in 2019. It didn't get a lot of acknowledgement, even though it was one of the biggest games at the Apple Arcade launch. Yep. And I think Brad is the only one on four-player podcast player who mentioned it or played it. I it. mentioned it. Soundtrack of the Year yeah. last year. But it sounds like Ed played it, yep. right? Yeah. From, so, from the developer so, of, of Year Walk. It probably, you're right. It probably didn't get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of discussion here, but we did, we, we played it. Um, number two. Final Fantasy. This one's going to be... Nine. 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 Ten. Six. Ten. Wait, what? Six? Six. 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 Ed got it. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy six. I am a big Final Fantasy fan, but six is my absolute favorite. I love everything about it. The characters, the graphics, and the music is some of the best in the series. I swear to God, people, one day I will play it. Just like their number one game of all time, Chrono Trigger. (laughs) <laughs> played I mean, it rather late in life and absolutely loved everything about it i want powerful muskox to write in for next week and tell me definitively which version i should play next we know i don't sure. trust. it's impossible not to like those games i truly believe that i think one just day you'll you know, play them I, and you'll be like I, damn i'm dumb i think i tried it just at the wrong time in my life because i tried it at a time in my life when i just i didn't appreciate those you games. probably weren't wearing headphones either DS Probably. version is great, and the GBA version of six is great. GBA. Final Fantasy six. I don't have a Game Boy Advance, but I can emulate uh, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Moving on. Yeah, Moving on. I got um, thoughts, but you know, he's got thoughts. Um, as a closing thought, I ask, what is a game that you feel has defined the current console generation and why? Uh, she says it was a cross-gen game, but probably Destiny. It showed that games as a service was a valid concept, even for a console game, and that you could reach a really broad audience. I never played much of it myself, but you can't deny that it was a success. I think can't deny that. Uh, Destiny Two even more so. Um, all right, thank you guys, or thank you, Eleanor, so much for writing in. If you are interested in submitting your own answers for the supporter spotlight, all you have to do is support us on Patreon at the five dollar tier or higher, or subscribe to us on Twitch. If you do so, you can access the supporter spotlight channel in our Discord at discord.gg slash four player. And there is a pinned link in that channel that will give you access to this form. Just put in your answers. We'll pick one at random each week and read your responses. Um, I'm running out of new ones. I have I haven't been pushing this heavy lately, so uh, we sh- we could use some new responses so I could get uh, get some new ones to read for future shows. So if you haven't done it yet, please do so. What but if now, we just went into chat and just like started p- pointing at people and saying, "Hey, submit yours." I like, mean, Marlou well, Red, where the fuck is yours? Why haven't you submitted it? Yet? I don't know. Here, you can't call out Marlou Red. Is I don't. Well, actually, is Marlou Marlou Red subscribes? Yeah, right. Yeah, Marlou. Yeah, come on, twenty-three yeah. month subscriber. He's got his one year badge. He's working on his second. Yeah, get in there <laughs> and submit, submit your supporter spotlight. You bitch. I'm just kidding. I love you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's wrap up the show with the four-player minute. Uh, hype, sweat, thank you, fuck you, or any combination there thereof. Um, we started last week. We started timing these. Just a general timer. Just to make sure we don't go too long-winded on, e- on any of these. So, Brad, are you ready? Yes. Uh, do we have a cool like sound effect this time? Uh, not for y'all to listen to this week, but next week I'll have to have that fixed. That's what he was working on before the show, and it wasn't... Having, but chat the people that are watching the broadcast right now will hear the sound effect okay but we won't all right tell me when to go uh go 
my hype for this week, but beyond being Monster Hunter Rise, of course, which will be my hype every week until that comes out, is all the little Palico Ninja amiibo. They finally released pictures of the actual amiibos in like real life or whatever. And oh man, I'm totally getting that amiibo. It looks so cool. Uh, my sweat though is for my PlayStation 5 pre order. I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but I said like if we get real details about a switch pro coming out early next year like the rumors suggested it's actually more powerful it actually runs games a lot better i'm i'm liable to cancel my ps5 pre-order because i care way more about monster hunter breath of the wild 2 and metroid prime 4 running really well and i will not deal with playing the crappy versions of those games uh my fuck you goes to near replicant which we finally saw a gameplay version of goes to square enix for charge where's the time written supposed to be on screen I don't no know it's, what's it's, it's not it's on the stream oh, oh, it's okay. on the stream he will uh, tell near, you near replicant nice looking remake of a of a game they're gonna charge 60 dollars for it that's insane to me it should not cost that much and my thank you for this week finally goes to whoever buys me this which is probably gonna happen someday check the link in chat these beautiful vagrant story figurines <laughs> Oh it cost God. about $180 for the pair. I'm never going to spend that money. Uh, but you know what? You never Brad know. Brad is straight up asking the community to buy him. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm bought me a 3080. That'd be nice. I'd like yeah. that. <laughs> Everybody you know, get your wish list out. I'm just, I'm just doing my thank you for the week ahead of time. In case one of these shows up on my, or the pair, the, the pair of these shows up on my doorstep one day. The pair. Anyways, that's all. How, how 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 far over did he go, Chris Davis? Pretty far. Uh, no, he went over by like thirty seconds. That's not what? bad. I'm just yeah. trying to keep him under like five minutes. Okay, this is just a guideline. All right. I want uh, a sound effect. I, or I want to see we'll the time. It. We'll get it. We'll get the sound effect eventually. Uh, I think when we do this, Chris Davis should turn his screen into like a timer so we can see it in real time. Or you can just you know idea. pull up the feed and just no, have but it that's muted. delayed. 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 I think that's not a bad delayed idea. Delayed by anyways. like two seconds. It's Let's more... have this discussion off the stream. Ed, why don't you go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my hype goes to Cyberpunk 2077. I'm pretty pretty excited for that game. It's going to be kind of the big game of, of this year, I think, so, um, especially since a lot of the other games got delayed. So uh, pretty hype about that. Um, my... My other hype, also, I'm just going to do another hype. I don't really have a sweat. So uh, my other hype is Demon Souls, uh, the remake. Yeah. It's going to be a PS5 release uh, title. So pretty ha- happy about that. And uh, my fuck you goes to Sony with the my, the whole Spider-Man bullshit. Have you guys heard about this? That, like, you're Who's not going to get the PS5, like, uh, remastered version of Spider-Man if you... If you don't buy it again for sixty dollars or whatever, seventy dollars full. Yeah, seventy. We heard about yeah. it, but you don't have time to explain. Go. Yeah. So fuck that. Uh, and my thank you, as usually is uh, when I come on the podcast, is for you guys for letting me on and letting me to cop out talk about b- bullshit like Neo and how I've spent a hundred hours playing that game. Whew. Well, come back more frequently, and you won't have to. You won't be. You, we won't let you keep thanking us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Nolan, mm-hmm. your turn. All right, uh, my hype uh, is for us. Be Lucky 2. Uh, comes out next week on PC. I'm finally going to pick that up, play it. I've been waiting for it, been excited for it. Game is a right. motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, it goes to all of the fucking games that are out right now. Hades, Wasteland 3, Speed Lucky is about to come out. Mario, playing all these fucking games. And, like, where where was it over, like, you know, like a couple of months ago? We had, like, this drought. And now all of a sudden the games come out at once. Um, my thank you is going to go to Bernadette because I had to find a game to play with my coworkers, and she suggested GeoGuessr, and that game's a fucking ton of fun, and we've been playing that. I'm probably going to keep playing that a little bit too. Um, and then my fuck you this week is going to go to Super Mario Sunshine. Fuck that game. Nintendo, I can't believe you put out such a piece of shit. Wow. <laughs> like even back in the day? <laughs> wow. It was kind of a stain on the on the GameCube era. Like, it was supposed to be so fucking hype. And then, like, honestly, Mario 64 is better than Sunshine. It had been a long time since a new 3D Mario game. So it was kind of shocking that that was the one. Nobody's going to dispute you that Mario 64 was better than Sunshine. But, man. Some people There's people out there that think it doesn't hold up. And I think those people are. But it is not. 
Like, it's got some problems. Chris Davis? Okay. Did you not that when I was finished? Because I finished with like 20 seconds left. Oh, yeah, by you, the way. You had like t- a good 10 seconds left, yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations, Nolan. You want to you wanna pat yeah. on the back? I mean, I wouldn't say no, except I would because fucking COVID. Fuck you trying to get me sick, Nick. Right. That's right. How I'm dare sorry. You. Chris Davis. All right. My hype this week is for 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. It is waiting in the other room for me to just plug it into my PS4 and play it. I am so looking forward to that. And uh, so it's weird. my first Vanillaware title. I'm looking forward to my first Vanillaware experience. So um, my sweat, uh, I was actually able to move some money around. And now I've also pre-ordered an Xbox. Uh, Jesus, dude. Yeah. I was. Hey, I, I had like $300 in, in free credit on Amazon. So I'm, basically, I'm only buying half an Xbox. Uh, <laughs> On yeah. Amazon, that's yeah. real money. My you can uh, buy a lot of things from Amazon. My other Biggest sweat is that the world. my other sweat is that I want to, I kind of want to wait for all these games to come out on the next gen consoles 20 seconds. to play them, uh, and uh, I that's going to really hurt the game of the year videos for me. And uh, my fuck you once again this week goes to Ubisoft. Fuck you for what you're doing to Splinter Cell. Fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you probably I, no. Con- considering how much Chris Davis loves Splinter Cell, he can get a few. He can get a few more fuck yous in for that one. I'll give it to him. You're so uh, weird with this third. The thirteen Sentinels thing is, you know, I also have it from coming from GameFly. I'm excited about it, but it, it seems like why this one? The, you occasionally have like the random game that like some people are excited for, but you don't expect Chris Davis to be excited for like it. The random like anime esque. Like what was that? What was yeah. that one that you played? Like the it was blue something. Blue, blue reflection. reflection. <laughs> blue yeah, reflection. Like, like where do these come from? I well, I mean, e- each one has it's like a visual a novel. You realize that, right? I mean, yeah. I and I've played visual novels. My one of my games of the year for 2015 was a visual novel. One so of my best friends is a visual novel. <laughs> 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 but like it's at the end of the day it's 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 giant mechs you know and, and fighting giant monsters like and done by vanillaware who has incredible artwork and has a hell of a reputation well, so i hope you enjoy it i Somebody really hope i do play and talk about it well i'm gonna play it i know i know you are all right uh Real quick, I just want you to know I had typed out my four-player minute here, but when I was talking a minute ago, after Brad finished his thing, I accidentally hit my my uh, what do you call it? Where it like auto translates? It t- Your G spot. No, it started art. It started articulating everything I was saying onto my phone, so it started overwriting what I was writing. So my phone now says hype. How far did it go over, Chris Davis? That's not bad. I'm just trying to keep him under like five minutes. Okay. It's like a whole fucking paragraph on here. You're hyped about the four-player minute, Nick. Uh, all right, starting. Are you ready? Yes, go. Starting now. My hype this week is there's so many video games, but I've been I've been waiting to get through some of them. I'm Mortal Shell. I picked up Mortal oh. Shell. No one's talked about that that yet, but it looks. I'm, I mean, I, I I was on the fence about it. Yeah, me it too. looks like a, it looks like a kind of a shorter t- style yeah. Souls game. So I'm I'm looking yeah. forward to playing that. Uh, it's my the Ashen sweat. of this year. Yeah, my sweat is Microsoft and Zenimax thing. For some reasons, I'm excited. Also, I think there's some good that might come from it. But I'm also kind of, you know, I don't know how how I feel about them owning properties like Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Like those are big fucking properties. Thirty that seconds. I play on PlayStation. Shut up, Brad. My fuck you goes to Paper Mario. How this game has they literally drop Wind Waker into the middle of Paper Mario. <coughs> what in the shit? What in the shit? That game's too long. And my thank you this week goes to uh, community member Chai and his girlfriend Steph for sending specifically Robin a copy of Tales from the Borderlands, but also I'm playing it. So uh, thank you so much for sending it. I played the first episode this last weekend, and it's great. It's great. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Time. Uh, I'm going to do like one episode per weekend or so for the next one episode a year. (laughs) Or that. If that's what you really want, Brad, maybe I will. Uh, but yeah, uh, that game was that was pretty play great. Two, play two next weekend. Play play two episodes next week. This week I might I might do that because this weekend's getting pretty. I got fucking I got mafia this weekend. I'm gonna play some mafia. All right, uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much out there for listening. That's our show. Uh, Ed, thank you for being here. Hope to see you again on the show very soon. Um, fourplayernetwork.com is of course the website where you can find all of our podcasts. 
Um, if you want to support us financially, go to patreon.com slash four player. If you want to be in the part of the community, which is absolutely free. And it's a great place to just hang out and have a dialogue with people, especially this is a great time to have dialogue with people on the internet because COVID sucks and that shit can fuck with your mental health. So come hang out, talk about video games. We're very welcoming discord.gg slash four player is where you'll find that. And, uh, Check back next week for another show. I think we'll be talking about Spelunky 2, Mafia Definitive Edition, a few other things. Should be good. So until next week, good night. <laughs>